It's all on the line today in College Park as Clemson battles Maryland next. The Clemson Tigers getting set to enter Bird Stadium, and here they come, led by their head coach, Danny Ford. This team has won the last two conference championships, and you hear the reaction they get from the pro Maryland crowd. There is Danny Ford, the sixth winningest active coach in NCAA Division I-A play. He knows what it feels like to win this conference championship. And here come the Terrapins of Maryland, everybody's favorite underdog. of the University of Maryland. The ACC title on the line as Clemson and Maryland do battle before a sellout crowd here in College Park on a gorgeous Maryland afternoon. Christmas in the air as fall comes to a close here in the East. The Terrapins getting ready with a five and four record to play for the conference championship. 50 degrees here at game time and a slight wind as you can see. It's a very sunny afternoon and the forecast is for more of the same. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Glad you're with us for this afternoon's game. You see some of the folks in the stands clad in oars. Those are the Clemson fans who made the trip. Today's starting lineup sponsored by AC Delco. Automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. Offensively for Maryland, they won the toss and will receive. Neil O'Donnell, the junior quarterback, will lead them out there. Ricky Johnson and Dennis Spinelli, who's on the touchdown binge in the backfield. Up front, they're going to do a big game from all five of those guys, as well as tight end Blaine Rose. They're going to have to give O'Donnell time, and they're going to have to open up some holes for the running game. The Turks will be dressed in black jerseys and red pants, one of the numerous uniform combinations that they employ during the course of the season. Ricky Johnson has dropped deep along with Brent Lowry. If you look at Rusty Sile, he gets set to kick it off. There are the deep receivers. To the top of your screen is Ricky Johnson. Brent Lowry to the bottom. We are underway in College Park. It's Johnson at the six. As he comes to the sidelines, he's dropped at the 23-yard line by Donnell Wolfer, the All-American defensive back who doubles as a kick coverer. That's interesting in itself when you think about it. Danny Ford likes to have his best out there at all times. There is O'Donnell, as I mentioned, the junior quarterback, third in passing efficiency in the conference out of Madison, New Jersey. On first down from their own 24. The first play goes to Spinelli straight up the middle for about three or four. Levon Kirkland, number 44, a last-minute starter at linebacker, makes the tackle for the Tigers. Our A.C. Delco starting defensive lineups for Clemson, Vance Hammond, Mark Drag, and Richard McCullough up front. Mark Drag with 10 sacks. Levon Kirkland, as I mentioned, a late starter at that linebacker spot. Ed McDaniel, the freshman, leads this team in tackles, and that secondary is as good as any in the country, led by the All-American Wolfer. Pickup of three, second down and seven. The toss is to Johnson. A hole on the left side. He breaks the tackle. Gets near first down yardage up to the 33 before he's finally stopped by Gene Beasley, number 27, out of the secondary. Ricky Johnson with 499 yards rushing coming into the game. He shares duty with Mike Beasley. It's going to be important for both Maryland's running backs to have big days today for Neil O'Donnell to be able to throw the football effectively. Third and one. These are the kind of plays Maryland will have to convert in order to give themselves a realistic shot at beating Clemson today. They're going to throw it on third and one. There's Joins, and his streak goes to 14 consecutive games in which he has caught at least one pass. 
Wolford on the coverage, and Ben, it's not often that Wolford gets beat on any type of pass play. This will show you what type of confidence Joe Krivak has in his junior quarterback, Neil O'Donnell. The thing that impresses me the most about Neil O'Donnell is that he makes good decisions. He's got joints open. He doesn't waste any time. Nice compact delivery. and delivers the ball right on the button for the first down. Pickup of nine. First down at their own 42. The Terps on the move. They give it to Johnson. He sidesteps the tackler. Gets to about the 45. Mark Drag held on. Number 85. Ben, you look at O'Donnell starting a big game really for the first time in his career. What does it feel like as Joe Krivak looks on to a quarterback in this big of a game? Well, there's a lot of butterflies that go on before the game. But once you get on the field, I know Neil O'Donnell feels this way. He wouldn't he wouldn't rather be anyplace else. He really likes to be in this type of situation because he feels like he can come out on top. Second and seven after Johnson got three. They're at their own 45. First quarter, no score. First possession of the game. O'Donnell will throw it. Here comes a blip. He has time. There's Johnson trying to cut between two linebackers. Kirkland was the first to hit him, number 44. And he got some help from Jesse Hatcher, the bandit linebacker, number 55, as he gets to midfield about two or three yards shy of the first down. 45, I spoke three. earlier about Neil O'Donnell making good decisions. He initially on that play wanted his tight end down the middle of the field. When he got hung up, O'Donnell had the presence of mind to come off and hit the underneath man for a good game. Third and three from their own 49. They threw on third and one. Let's see what they do here. Inside to Spinelli, straight up the middle. He's going to be close. Hatcher, number 55, got him first and was joined by Marieville, number 56. He crossed midfield, and they're going to measure. Well, what a great story Dorian Marieville is. On the evening of the spring game last year, he was in a car accident and partially went through the windshield of his car, injuring his neck and his shoulder. He came back, worked as hard as you could possibly work in the offseason once he was rehabilitated, and look what he's doing now. Boy, is it close. I mean, an inch. Fourth down, what do you do, Ben? Well, when you've got a player of O'Donnell's caliber, you can do a lot of things, but I think he'll do the simplest thing and take it and push for straight ahead and for as much yards as possible. A fourth down gamble. David Carr, number 84, comes in as a second tight end, replacing Barry Johnson. The first big decision of the game, Joe Krivak didn't even hesitate. These are the type of plays that make or break ACC titles. 6'3", 221. That's the size of O'Donnell. That's what he does. He's got the first down. Almost impossible to stop that, isn't it? Well, about the only way you can stop a quarterback sneak when you have somebody O'Donnell size and an offensive line the caliber of Maryland is to have a fumbled snap. O'Donnell not worried about picking up big yardage. He knows he only needs about four inches for the first down. He's a big, strong defender. He's going to get you the first down nine times out of ten. He followed his big center, Mark Agent, 6'5", 245. When you've only got an inch to go, it makes it pretty certain. All he had to do was stumble and fall forward. He had it. Well, you know, we talk about little plays ended up being the big plays at the end of the game. That was a big decision at midfield to go for it on fourth down. Early in the game, on the first possession of the game. First down now from the Clemson 48. He'll throw on first down. As the time goes to complete the joins, he gets away from Lott and gets inside the 35 before Marriable and Hatcher combine to bring him down. A pickup of 13 for the Terrapins. And Ben, this is a very impressive opening drive. This is what Joe Krivak wants out of his office. He wants to control the football and keep uh, Clemson off the field. Joins goes down to 12 yards and hooks up. O'Donnell is delivering the ball not only on the money, but he's throwing the football on rhythm, which is unbelievably important in the passing game. From the Clemson 35, third consecutive first down for the Terrapin. Spinelli gets outside, inside the 30 before he's shouldered out of bounds by Dexter Davis, number nine. But he carries for big yardage, that big fullback, the junior out of Lindenhurst, New York. There's a look at what he's done this season. All four of those touchdowns, by the way, have come in the last three games. Well, Maryland, close to another first down, will face second and about two. They started from their own 24. A big key is that they've already run for some minutes off of the clock. 
O'Donnell gets outside. He does it complete the Rose inside the 10. Gene Beasley saved the touchdown. 21 yards. Maryland is mixing it up very, very well right now and keeping Clemson off balance. O'Donnell is good on the run as he is in the pocket. Hits his tight end, Blaine Rose, wide open for a big game. And the key to the whole thing is that O'Donnell has been right on the money. I asked Joe Prebeck yesterday, do you feel like you have to score early? He said it would help. Well, seeing how nobody has scored on Clemson in the first quarter of this year, it would be a big thing. The toss to Johnson. It's a foot race. He cuts back and scores! touchdown rushing of the season as Ben mentioned first time all year Clemson's been scored on in the first quarter you can tack this one on because it's automatic clock he's 88 for 88 in his career and there's number 89 seven and nothing the turf before a rocking sellout house here at Bird Stadium another look at the score emotion is such a big part of college football you can see Maryland is fired up this is a lot of individual effort on the part of Ricky Johnson he gets the football into the end zone it's the first time this year that Clemson has been scored on in the first quarter 10 15 remaining in the first quarter Maryland jumps out to the early lead we'll come back to Birch Stadium for more ACC action in a moment Bird Stadium. There is Ricky Johnson. He just scored the touchdown for Maryland. Their first possession. They took more than four and a half minutes off the clock, and they rammed it into the end zone on Clemson to leave a calling card here in the opening minutes as to who's in charge at Bird Stadium. They marched it 76 yards for the touchdown. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett on a beautiful day at Bird Stadium. It's getting even better looking for the Maryland folks. There is Clocky as Joe Henderson is dropped deep for Clemson. Along with Wesley McFadden. McFadden at the top of your screen. Henderson playing on a tender ankle at the bottom of your screen. This is for the ACC championship, though. You couldn't keep him out of this game. A high short kick. McFadden at the 15. Dragged down as he crossed the 30 by Darren Grosdo. Number 91, a 17 yard return. Today's starting lineup sponsored by AC Delco. Automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. For Clemson offensively, these parts have matched all year. Williams at quarterback, Allen at tailback. And look for the bull, Tracy Johnson, to carry the ball more today up the middle because the Clemson coaching staff feels that with this offensive line that you see there, they can open up some holes against a soft Maryland interior. Flags fly before the first snap. Nudemacher, a little anxious to hit somebody. I don't blame him. If I were 6'2 and 290, I'd be anxious to hit somebody too. Especially after you sit on the bench chomping at the bit for four and a half minutes. Which Clemson had to do as they watched Maryland drive at 76 yards and jam it into the end zone. Kevin, well, they didn't do anything wrong, Ben. A that's absolutely the, the case. Maryland's going to need to do that all afternoon long. They're going to need to execute flawlessly and keep Clemson's top, up top of the nation turnover ratio down. I want to apologize for those of you who are without audio for the first minute or so of the telecast. We have that problem corrected. I hope you'll hear us the rest of the day. Here's Allen. Short yardage. Warren Powers, number 90 in black. So it's always interesting to see as we take another look at our AC Delco starting defensive lineups for the turn. Always interesting, Ben, to see how long emotion can carry a team. So far, it's sustained itself pretty well for the Terrapin. The crowd is going to play a big factor in this game before it's all over. Second and 13. In motion, Gary Cooper. He's their big play guy, and he just entered the game. There's Jennings. 
and he cannot slip the tackle on the side and gets to about the 40. Nice tackle by Irvin Smith because size-wise, that's a mismatch, an 11-yard pickup for Jennings, and his streak remains intact now. That's 14 straight games for him with at least one pass. You talk about the size mismatch. Keith Jennings is going to mismatch just about every defensive back in the country. This guy is six foot four, 235 pounds. He's a load to bring down. There's Rodney Williams, the quarterback out of Columbia, South Carolina. He faces third and two. Williams still has it around the corner, has the first down, and gets run out of bounds. But he did a nice job of deception as Chad Sidner, number 19, came up to drop him. Everybody thought Tracy Johnson had the ball. This is what Rodney Williams does for you. He runs the offense to the best of his abilities, which has made him the winningest quarterback in Clemson history. There's no secret to what he's trying to do. If he's open to run, he's going to run the football. He's rushed it for five touchdowns this year. And that time he picked up the first down. From their own 47, Clemson operating down 7-0. Here comes the reverse. It's Cooper. In trouble. Needs a block, turns it into a big gainer inside the 30, he's gone! <laughs> 52 yards, I said he was a big play guy. He averages better than 38 yards per reception, but I want to tell you, he put a dance on Jack Bradford in the backfield that would make anybody come down with a head cold. You want to talk about a tremendous individual effort. Holy smokes. Well, we knew this game would be exciting. The style comes on from the conversion. But we didn't think that each team would open up with touchdown samples against each other with 839 left in the first quarter. We're all tied at seven after that electrifying 52 yard run by Gary Cooper. You want to talk about an individual effort. Watch what Gary Cooper does on this play. Watch him avoid people, cut back, use his blockers and use his speed to get away from everybody. This is a thing of beauty. He nearly celebrated too soon. So for Cooper, a big touchdown run. That ties the game at seven. We'll return to Bird Stadium for more ACC football with a conference championship on the line in a moment. Back live at Bird Stadium after a visit from Spuds McKenzie and the Spudettes here. I tell you, everybody's here today. This is a happening in Clemson, in Maryland, playing for the ACC title. There's the drive for Clemson that got them even. Didn't take long, of course. It doesn't take long when you've got a run like Cooper made. You know, I was talking to Joe Prevac yesterday, Ben, and he said he was going to preach to his players on the Maryland side that somebody has to make a big play because Clemson doesn't give up many touchdowns, so you have to make big plays. Well, it happened against him. Bradford had a chance to make a big defensive play, but didn't make it. Well, and Gary Cooper conversely made the big play for Clemson. My coach up in Chicago, Perry Moss, always says to our team, Big, great players make big plays in important games. This is about as important as they get. A million dollar payoff and the ACC title. Ricky Johnson at the top of your screen, Lowry at the bottom. Sile puts his foot into it, he really got it. Coming down to Lowry at the one. Ducks his head and gets to about the 24 yard line. Now you have to wonder, Ben, after that 23 yard return, if that touchdown answering Maryland score by Clemson will affect the Maryland offense. They were brimming with confidence after scoring early. Well, I don't know if it's going to affect their confidence, but they got to start thinking to themselves now, hey, Clemson can put points on the board in a hurry. We've got to keep our hands on the football and not make mistakes. Joe Kreback, who saw him in the picture, told me yesterday time of possession will be important for his team. Well, they did a good job the first time. Here comes O'Donnell. Pitches back to Johnson. Crosses the 30 to the 35 before he's upended by James Lott, number five, and Dexter Davis in an 11-yard pickup. Well, we haven't seen Mike Beasley yet. It's because of the way Johnson's playing. Those are the stories per game for the season. You can see Maryland 
They got 501 total yards against North Carolina a few weeks ago. Clemson does it mostly on the ground. Maryland will mix it up. As they did on their opening drive. Green in motion. Here's Johnson again. Caught from behind by drag. And then Beasley just smothers it. Mark Drag sure has been a pleasant surprise for anybody that's followed Clemson football. He's come through. We mentioned the 10 sacks at the beginning of the game. But he's just been in on so many big plays this year. To lose him would be a huge loss to this Clemson defense. Maryland will operate now from just across their own 35. Second and 10 after no gain on that play. Drag the senior from Charlotte anchors the middle of that Clemson defensive front. Again, O'Donnell has time. Now he has to get out of there. Lee's in trouble. Outruns Kirkland and picks up three or four. Well, for those of you who didn't know if Neil O'Donnell could run fast, he outran the linebacker Kirkland to the sideline. This is one of the reasons why Neil O'Donnell has almost rushed for 300 yards this year. When people are covered downfield, he doesn't try to force the ball in. He uses his athletic ability, which is a big, big plus for the Maryland offense, and gets out of trouble and picks up positive yards. How about the block by Clarence Jones, number 74, his left tackle. He drilled the Clemson player to his back. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen there. Joins the nearest to us, then Green, and then Johnson. O'Donnell has time for Joins. It was a little late getting there, and that allowed Dexter Davis to come in and knock it away. I spoke earlier in the telecast that Neil O'Donnell was throwing the football on rhythm. You can see at the end of his drop, Neil O'Donnell kind of hesitates a little bit and double clutches the ball, which gives Davis the, the opportunity to come in at the last second and knock the football away. Those cornerbacks for Clemson are mighty good. Wolford and Davis. Wolford drops deep to receive the punt from the Armas. The left-footed Maryland punter hangs it high. Fair catch call for by Wolford. Boy, he had trouble. Finally zeroing in on that one. He takes it at about the 17 after a 43-yard punt. So with 7.06 left in the first half, we're tied at 7 with the ACC championship on the line. We're back live at Bird Stadium. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett and everybody who's anybody in the ACC is keeping their eyes on this one because the championship of the conference is on the line here this afternoon. If Clemson wins, they are the outright champion. If Maryland wins, they have everything going for them. All they would have to do is defeat Virginia next week and they would be the champions of the conference. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, the tail of the tape for both of these teams, Maryland defensively gives up lots of yardage. 7.06 left, first quarter, tied at seven. They run the fullback, Tracy Johnson. He runs into a stone wall. Kevin Fox on the first there. Actually, Wesley McFadden now in his fullback made the carry. It's a tough job for McFadden, isn't it, Ben? He was a tailback, and then they shifted him to fullback, and now he's a backup fullback. It's tough to get in there and play as well. After all of those changes. Well, the thing that the Maryland or that the Clemson offensive coaches were so pleased with is that he's an unselfish player and made a very graceful transition from tailback to fullback. Pick up a few second and eight. Cooper, number 25 in the game again, wide to the top of your screen. Williams pitches back for Allen. Knocked out of bounds near the 30. He's very close to the first down. Chad Sidner, number 19, came up to bump the conference's leading rusher out of bounds. And I tell you, one of the big keys for Clemson, in addition to the fact that their wide receivers can make great runs on reverses, they block as well as any receivers I've seen anywhere. They get downfield and they get on defensive backs. If Clemson's backs pop through the line and those defensive backs are occupied, it makes for a lot bigger game. They're going to measure to see if Allen was able to pick it up. He came into this game needing just 44 yards for a 1,000-yard season. The only sophomore in Clemson history to rush for 1,000 yards. But he got the first down. He leads the conference in rushing. He averages six yards of crap. That's pretty hefty number. Well, I tell you, the amazing thing about what he did last weekend, his longest run was 16 yards, but he had six, or actually 24 yards, but he had 16 carries of six yards or more. That's consistent, isn't it? 
It may not be a world's record, but that's a heck of an average. First down, Clemson, 621 left in the first quarter, all tied at seven. Sellout crowd at Bird Stadium on a gorgeous afternoon. Williams, the pass on first down, lost it outside. He's got Hooper, and Hooper is up to the 38-yard line before Fox can drop him a nine-yard pickup. Ricardo Hooper, number 26. Gary Cooper, number 25. So far, we've seen both quarterbacks execute everything that they've tried today. Rodney Williams right on the button, delivers the football right where Hooper can get his hands on the football and turn upfield. And the flag will work against Clemson. Andy Ford doesn't like it. We have an ineligible downfield on the offense, five-yard penalty. That'll happen when your quarterback is rolling out with an option to run or pass. It'll be first and 15. Didn't look real happy with that call, did he? No, he's not happy. You know, Danny Ford is normally very laid back, but he's an extreme perfectionist. He wants the best out of his club. Williams just decides to do it again. Jennings trying to sidestep the tackle on the far side. Gets up to about the 33, sitting on the 19, brought him down. Pickup of about 10 will make it second and five. This is what makes Clemson so tough. I had spoken earlier about how well Clemson's wide receivers block downfield. Just when you think they're going to come out and hit you, they hook up and catch the ball. Very difficult to defend. And now a flag working against Maryland. We have a dead ball foul. Late hit on the defense at 15 yard penalty. First down. So that personal foul does not bring a smile to the face of Joe Crevent. First two penalties here. We well, you know coaches don't mind mistakes of aggression, but they do really get upset at mental errors, and that's what that was. First down Clemson at their own 47. Williams tosses it to Allen. Sidnor knocks him out of bounds. But Clemson starting to assert itself now with that powerful running game. And that's no big surprise. This is what Clemson does every week. They wear you down with that big offensive line and the powerful backs that they have. They're not just one or two deep. They've got four and five guys that can run the football right at you. They're in Maryland territory at the first 46 with a second and four after Allen picked up six. Second possession for the Tigers. They scored the first time they had the ball. The toss is to Allen. He makes a move at the line of scrimmage and ducks inside the 40 before Rick Fleece, number 96, can chase him down from behind. But that is another Clemson first down. What Terry Allen does for you is he does everything right. He's not spectacular, but boy, I tell you what, you watch what he does throughout the game. He covers the ball when he's in traffic. He gets his shoulder square, and he runs north and south. There's no wasted motion when Terry Allen gets his hands on the football. Maryland trying to win here in Bird Stadium for the first time since 1980. Or Clemson, I should say. They haven't won here since 1980. They won in Baltimore, but not in this stadium. As McFadden carries for short yardage. It's near the 37-yard line before Matt D'Amico and Larry Webster bring him down. So it's been a drop for the Tigers here on this playing surface. I don't think Danny Ford's not aware of it. You know, should Clemson win today and win their, AC, their third consecutive ACC title, it'll only be the fourth time in the history of the league that a team has done that. They look at second down and seven down. Might be a passing down for most teams, but not for Clemson. That time they were waiting for him. Good job from Mark Walsh, number 42, the junior out of Belleville, New Jersey. He was ready for Terry Allen, and they had the option defense very well. 
Walsh did a great job of playing off the block of number 59, Jeb Flesh. Got himself into Terry Allen's line of sight and disrupted the entire play. So now it'll bring a third and five. And the crowd exhorts the Maryland defensive team. Williams has it deflected as he's trying to hit Jennings. I'm not sure who got a hand on it. It may have been D'Amico. But whoever it was did what Joe Krivak told me yesterday. Somebody has to make a big play for it. And that was a big play. And although it's still early in the first quarter and there's plenty of time left in the game, the little plays like that, just a little, little play by getting your hands up, can turn out to be a big, big play in the ballgame. Gardaki on for the field goal attempt of 51 yards. He's one of four from this distance. That was a 52-yarder last week. He's got it on target. And he drills it through there. So Chris Gardaki, they weren't even sure he'd be the kicker when the season started. He nails a 51-yarder to give Clemson a 10-7 lead. So on each of their first two possessions, the Tigers have scored. And with 325 left in the quarter, they enjoy a three-point lead. We'll be back with more ACC action in a moment. I said at the top of the telecast, Norman Rockwell couldn't have painted a better day. And that's what we have here in College Park, and you see what's transpired thus far to the delight of the Clemson Tiger. 10-7, Clemson in the lead. That was the last scoring drive by the Tigers, culminating in that 51-yard field goal by Gardaki. Maryland took the opening kickoff, drove 76 yards to a touchdown on a run by Ricky Johnson of 70 yards. But it was that Gary Cooper 52-yard end around that got Clemson back in. And Ben, you remember a week ago, they were struggling against North Carolina, and it took an end around pass to Cooper of better than 50 yards that got Clemson going there. Well, a lot of people call those trick plays or, or, you know, gadget plays. But when you run the football as effectively as Clemson does, it causes the other team to commit a lot of players to trying to stop that. And that's what makes you susceptible to the, to the reverses and to the halfback pass. Sile will kick off. We saw the two deep men, Johnson and Lowry. A high kick. This time it's Lowry at the six. He runs head on. Clemson tackler, and I mean, he got busted by Wayne Harps, number 16. 16-yard return. He looked for a moment as though Lowry had some room, but he ran into Harps, and I mean, he didn't go any further. I'm going to tell you, that was a shot right there. It was like he ran into a wall. They just both stopped moving. That one hurt all the way up here. Harps is laughing about it. Didn't hurt him. He was the giver. Yeah, I do it every day is what he's telling him. Beasley in their tailback, number one. His first appearance of the day, and look out. Hatcher has him and knocks him down. Jesse Hatcher, with his fifth sack of the season, was not fooled by that fake to Beasley. The bandit linebacker, Jesse Hatcher. O'Donnell's making the fake and trying to get outside. He did this earlier, and Hatcher was fooled. This time, Hatcher will have none of that. A loss of eight. You look at Hatcher, just 210 pounds. O'Donnell's bigger than he is, but he brought him down with an arm tackle. He's strong, 210. Second down now, and a long 17. Call it. Inside their own 15. Now, Maryland has to be careful. They'll run the draw play with Lowry. Levon Kirkland wraps him up on the far side. The freshman out of Lamar, South Carolina. This is the way you stop a draw play. You get people that are catching and waiting and reading and reacting once they see that the draw is coming. Had that not been a draw, Clemson wouldn't have had a great pass rush. But then again, Maryland is in second and long, and they didn't need a great pass rush. They'll operate from their own 13 on third and 19. O'Donnell runs the draw to Beasley. He stumbles as he gets close to the 15. And the Turks are going to have to punt it, and the Blue Birds make their presence known. They're not wild about the play selection. Well, of course, everybody.
everybody in the stands wants to see O'Donnell throw the football. But it's very good play calling on the part of Joe Kreebeck. He's only down three points. He's down in his own end of the field. You don't want to take a chance on turning the football over. The sack on first down really hurt. The Armas will kick. Wolford is deep. He needs to boom one here. And he hangs it up pretty high. Wolford from his 45. Going to try to return it. He's a dangerous return man. If he can get outside, but a great tackle by Mike Thomas, number five. After a 40-yard punt, and that keeps Wolford from returning it at all. This is probably the loneliest job in sports, returning punts. Donna Wolford, although, is one of the best in the country this year. Unfortunately, when you're going against a team that's fired up, it makes it very difficult for you to find any kind of running room. Critical series for the Maryland defensive team if you look at Thomas, who made that play. They need to get some confidence defensively. Williams dropping back. Guns it the other way and overthrows Hooper. What happened, he was looking for Cooper, but Sidner did a great job of bumping Cooper as he came out and didn't let him get past him. If he misses him, it's six the other way. Boston College threatening to upset the Orangemen. Georgia Tech out in front of Wake Forest in the second quarter. The Hawkeyes trying to keep their bull hopes alive. Lead Ohio State, and that one is scoreless at Mississippi State in the first quarter. Second and ten for Clemson. Stopped him. Oh, look at him. Look at this young man. Run. He's inside the 45. He was stopped for a two-yard loss. I'm going to tell you, I said earlier, great players make big plays in big games. This is the biggest they come. Watch the effort by Terry Allen. For all intents and purposes, this should have been a loss of two yards. Look at Allen's individual effort. You can't coach desire. And let me tell you, this kid is overflowing with desire. You saw on the top of the telecast the short touchdown run he made last week that was nothing but effort after he was hit three or four times. Same situation there. He keeps the legs turning and just will not go down. From the 44 of Maryland. They run Tracy Johnson up the middle. He gets a couple before Warren Power drops him. You know, people always ask when they watch football games, you know, why do they always try to run the football up in the middle? It never goes for any yards. Well, you've got to keep the middle of the defense honest because if you don't ever give it to your fullback, the linebackers are going to flow outside and stuff up your outside running game. Probably won't get another playoff here in the first quarter as it now comes to an end. So an exciting 15 minutes of ACC football comes to an end here in Bird Stadium with Clemson on top of Maryland 10-7. We'll return to College Park, Maryland for more ACC football in a moment. Well, when you run the option, you've got to have a quarterback that's not afraid to turn up and put his head down. And Rodney Williams has done that for Clemson for four years. Another third and five facing Rodney. Three wide receivers in there. Davis, number seven, comes in. They'll run it with Allen. Warren Powers gets him short of the first down. Boy, he was holding on because, as you've mentioned, as we've seen today, Allen fights for that extra yardage. But Powers, the senior out of Baltimore, did a great job to keep him short of the first down. Well, this will show you what kind of confidence Danny Ford has in his offensive line and in Terry Allen. On third and five, it's almost a definite passing situation for most teams. When you've got Terry Allen in your backfield, you have confidence that he can pick up that five yards. 35-yard field goal attempt by Gardaki. He's 5 of 7 from this distance. Included a 51-yarder earlier today. Oh, he hooked this one badly. And that gets this crowd back into it. A sellout crowd on their feet now as Maryland's defense holds. 11.47 left in the half. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ACC station. Nowhere to 
is the story from the penthouse to the outhouse go as quickly as in college football for a kicker. You saw Chris Gardaki kick a 51 yarder earlier who just now hooked the 35 yarder very badly. So Clemson leads it by three with 11.47 remaining in the first half. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett. Did you order this weather, Ben? I had, it, I had it specially booked just for you, Kevin. Well, I appreciate it. It is just picture perfect today here in College Park. I'll send you a bill. Maryland leads it. Our trails at 10-7 after leading 7-0 early. Kevin Lane will score since. O'Donnell back to the air. Barry Johnson at the 30. He falls about a foot shy of the first down. This is what they did successfully on that opening drive in which they scored and took the early lead. Clemson's defense has dominated them since. We talked about rhythm. You can see O'Donnell sets up, lets the ball go right as he comes forward and puts it on the money. Johnson stumbles coming out of his break, but he still picks up nine yards, puts Maryland in a very good position. Johnson comes out, two tight ends in there now. Brent Boley comes in at one of the tight ends, number 83. That is he that goes in motion. The toss is to Ricky Johnson. He's in trouble. And like Terry Allen, when it looks like the great backs are caught for a loss, they somehow turn it into a positive game. And he picked up the first down. Well, his linemen ought to pat him on the back. He did a great job of making something out of nothing and picking up the first down. He scored the Maryland touchdown on a seven-yard burst over the left side in the game's opening minutes. Maryland has not been able to eat any time off the clock offensively since that first drive. But this first down here has to give them some confidence again. Here comes Johnson. Gets a block. Turns it up across the 35. Diving to the 36 before Dexter Davis upended him. Number nine had some help from Ed McDaniel, number 93. Boy, McDaniel's a story, Ben. He's the leading tackler. He's a freshman. Didn't even start the first two games. Well, a lot of defenses, and Clemson's in particular, is designed to have your linebackers make the tackles. They use the down linemen to keep the offensive guards and the offensive tackles off of your linebackers because your linebackers are usually the best athletes on your defense. Second and four after a six-yard pickup. There goes Johnson again. Breaks, drags tackle but now gets turned around and doesn't get too far. McDaniel wrapped him up. Tell you what, when you break a tackle from Mark Drag, you've done something all by yourself. If Clemson wins this game, they will be the ACC champions. If Maryland wins, they can wrap up the ACC championship by defeating Virginia next week. So both of these teams control their own destiny, and that's all a coach really can ask for at this stage of the season. Third and three for the Turks. O'Donnell will throw for it. Guns it complete to Johnson. He turns and has the first down and then some. He's in Clemson territory as Lott brings him down. It looked like he brought him down with a fist at the end of the play. Yeah, what well, you know, in reality, what he's trying to do at the end of the play is he's trying to knock the football out of his hands. We talked about O'Donnell making good decisions. He wanted to go downfield, and at the last second, turn and guns the ball out to Johnson. Now watch at the end, as he gets his hands on his jersey, watch him try and swat the ball out. Fortunately for Ricky Johnson, he rolled over at the right time, and it looked like a shot to the back of the head. Yeah, it wasn't real close to the ball there. Lots lucky because the officials were standing right there. Bill Krivak has asked for a timeout. With 9-14 remaining, this is a good possession for them to be careful. They are in Clemson territory for the first time since the opening possession. We'll return to Bird Stadium for more after this. Back live here at College Park, our small liquor student athlete of the week is Mark Bragg, 3.50 grade point in industrial management. A senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina for the Clemson Tigers, our Schlitz Malt Liquor Student Athlete of the Week. Congratulations to Mark. He also has 10 sacks. So he's busy in the classroom as well as on the football field. I can promise you, he'd rather be chasing quarterbacks and laying concrete on roads, which is what he did for work this summer. <laughs> Anybody would rather be chasing quarterbacks than doing that. First down for the Terps. The big pullback, Spinelli, rolls downfield inside the 35.
You know, we talked about earlier in the show, these little runs up the middle that don't go for any yards. Well, this is what happens if you stay with it. Spinelli pops through after the offensive line opened a huge hole for him. He's not just a touchdown scorer. He's a big runner, too. 13 yards that time he pulled through the Clemson defense for. First down at the 33. Here goes Johnson. Look at Johnson nimble his way inside the 25. He made a lot miss. Gene Beasley came up to stop him. Number 27, a nine-yard pickup for Johnson, and the Terps machine is rolling on. Again, the first people that you have to pat on the back are the offensive linemen. Look at the hole they open up right here for Johnson. The rest is just individual effort. And you know, Kevin, ever since the missed field goal, you can almost feel the momentum starting to turn back towards Maryland. Maryland had not done anything offensively since that opening possession. And then all of a sudden, as you say, that got the crowd back into it, and it was only a 35-yard field goal makeable for Gardaki. O'Donnell guns it for Rose, and he dropped it. Had to turn back the other way to catch it. I'm going to tell you who made that play defensively was... the tight end to avoid the interception. So now it is third and one. 8.08 remaining in the first half. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett, glad you could join us for this week's ACC Game of the Week with a conference championship at stake. Two tight ends in there for the therapy. Flags are down as Johnson appears to have the first down. You that got, play didn't look right from the start. Uh, you got Mar all sorts of Maryland people jumping around. Well, those little mistakes that you talk about at each week, Ben. That one will cost them five big yards. In the first Good ball foul. Full start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Watch the left side of Maryland's offensive line. Prior to the snap, you can see the tackle take off. And the tight end kind of jumped a little bit before that. When you're not in sync, you're going to be offside. And boy, those are the nagging little penalties that really get to you if you're a coach. Now it's third and six. It won't be a big penalty if they can pick up the first down. But if they can't, that will loom large. Watch the tight end on this play. Here comes the blitz from Beasley. Incomplete. Flags are down. It was a heck of an attempt by Johnson, but the ball popped loose. He fooled one official. One was going to rule it complete, but the other one who had the better view. But the flag appears to be against Clemson. So both coaches exchanging grief over little penalty. Offsides on the defense. Five yards. Well, we'll be back to where we were five minutes ago, third and one. You know, Kevin, I was talking about the mental mistakes as opposed to mistakes of aggression. A coach doesn't mind if a guy is really going all out for a tackle and happens to get his hand hooked up in a face mask. He'd rather not have it, but that's the kind of penalty he would rather have than a guy jumping off sides or lining up in the neutral zone worse than, worse than that. <laughs> now, when you line up offside, it's really bad. Now, here we go. Third and one. O'Donnell. Oh, he's got a touchdown. There it is to Johnson. try to make his 90th consecutive point after. He's 89 of 89 for his career, and he has a perfect 90. And for Johnson, that 24-yard touchdown catch is his second touchdown reception of the year, and it comes out of the old playbook of Bart Starr on third and one. Oh, 
O'Donnell made a great fake, and Johnson got open. Well, conventional thinking on third and short is that you're going to run the football, and you have the opportunity to make big plays that you can execute. Johnson snuck past the linebacker. O'Donnell delivered the ball right on the money, and that was a big, big call. Great call by Joe Freebeck. Everybody thought run, as you mentioned, Ben, and that allowed Johnson to get behind Wolford, who tried to tackle him over there. Well, even if he'd been, if he tackled him, it would only have been a penalty, not a right. touchdown. That's what he was trying to do, prevent the touchdown. Seven and a half left in the half. We'll be back in a moment. Well, if you ever wonder about the value of a five-yard penalty, well, it's worth seven points. That's what the penalty cost Clemson here. They had stopped Maryland on third down, and then Maryland got a second chance to prove for the touchdown. Beautiful day here in College Park. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett. The Terps have a four-point lead over favored Clemson with 7.38 remaining in the first half. Again, the importance of this game, if Clemson wins, they are the ACC champ. If Maryland wins, they're in the driver's seat. They would have to still beat Virginia next week, but if they did that, they would be the conference champions in a trip to the Florida Citrus Bowl. If they win today, the worst they could do is tie for first place. McFadden was undecided about coming out, and he gets out to the 26. Joel Goody, number 45, able to get down there and bring him down. So Clemson will take over. Now you have to ask yourself, will the momentum that Maryland's offense has gained, will that carry over their defensive unit? Remember, it was a missed field goal by Gardaki that got Maryland up off the floor. Their offense drove for a touchdown following that missed field goal. question at least for one play man <laughs> and again the crowd is starting to get back into this on the option if you're a quarterback you your first option is to hand the football off your second is to run the football and your third is to get out of the way of Matt D'Amico is chasing him <laughs> get out of the way of any linebacker who has murder on his mind there is D'Amico he had that big interception at North Carolina that set up the game winning field goal a couple of weeks ago First man through is McFadden. Wesley gets close to the 35, but it will bring up a third down play as D'Amico and Jack Bradford, number 47, combined to bring down the junior out of Chester, South Carolina. Sellout crowd at Bird Stadium. A Chamber of Commerce day here in College Park. Take a picture of the stadium to sell the city. feet on third down and four. Williams cuts it upfield. First down at the 40. No hesitation in the decision by Rodney Williams. Chad Sidner, number 19, brought him down. It's a 10-yard gain, and Ben Williams has been effective running the ball. You know, and you got to give Rodney Williams a lot of credit. Throughout this guy's career, he's had uh, arthroscopic surgery on his knee. He's had a broken jaw twice. He's got a bone chip in his thumb. You think any of that is going through his mind right now? No, this guy wants to win an ACC title and wants the ACC championship ring. That's what they're playing for. Not to mention a holiday trip for the Florida Citrus Bowl, because that's what's at the end of the rainbow for the winner of this guy. Williams again has a hole. He's to midfield before he's wrestled down for behind Scott Whittier, number 38. Number 38. Got him. The junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Rodney Williams has taken command himself. He has 42 yards rushing today on six carries. Not a bad average. Well, to illustrate what kind of guy Rodney Williams is, when he first got into school at Clemson, he was driving a Corvette. But that's not the type of guy he is. He's not flashy. He's not dynamic. He just gets the job done. Now he drives a Jeep. <laughs> From midfield, one of the few quarterbacks around that drives a Jeep. Toss to Allen, who's been quiet for a while. Run out of bounds by Larry Webster. 
record of Riley Nye in making his second start of the season. Started for the first time this year last week against Penn State and responded with a big game. We spoke about this earlier. Watch on the corner. Watch the wide receivers down on the defensive backs. That's what allows Terry Allen right there in your screen. It allows Terry Allen to get upfield and get to the secondary. First down Clemson at the Maryland 44. run carries him over a thousand yards for the season and he leads the conference in Russia. Williams with a first down bullet he completes it to Hooper. Hooper breaks one tackle inside the 25 he won't be denied. Finally wrestled down Ricardo Hooper with a big gainer all the way down inside the 25. Irvin Smith finally brought him there. These are the things that will put momentum back in your column. Rodney Williams guns the ball to Hooper, who makes a tremendous individual effort. Watch him after he gets his hands on the ball, how long he stays on his feet fighting for yardage. 20-yard pickup. They'll spot it at the 24. J.B. Brown just couldn't hang on. Ricardo now gets a seat on the sideline. First down, Clemson. They threaten. Inside handoff goes to the fullback. He's inside the 20. So the patented Clemson offense doing what it does best now. Mixing in a pass here and there. Fadden carrying it in. Maryland just took the lead 14-10. They took the opening kickoff and took an early 7-0 lead. But Clemson responded with a touchdown of their own, then a field goal. Then Gardaki missed the 35-yard field goal attempt, and Maryland came back on a 24-yard touchdown pass to Ricky Johnson to take the lead, and that's where we are now. Maryland's in a position right now where they need to make a big play. 356 left and a half. There it is. It came from the backside, and Warren Powers dropping Williams for a loss back to the 20. And that'll set up a big third down play. When an offense is clicking as well as Maryland's is, they're going to execute better and better every play unless somebody steps to the front and makes the big play. Warren Powers did it that time. Senior leadership. Third down and six. There is Powers. 60% on third down. Maryland's coming with a blitz right here. Should be man-to-man -man coverage. Williams reads it, throws it, but throws it away. Sidner was over there covering Gary Cooper. That'll mean Gardaki with a chance to redeem himself. He missed from 35 yards out. Every time Clemson has had the ball, they've had a chance to score so far, Ben. So they haven't had trouble moving it, but they have had trouble capitalizing. The only touchdown came on that electrifying 52-yard run by Cooper. You know, that'll go down in the books as an incomplete pass. What you won't read in the stats is the guts that it took to call the blitz and the fact that the blitz actually made Williams hurry the football and thus it was incomplete. 36-yard attempt. He's made one from 51, missed from 35, and it's I don't know who got a piece of it, but it may well have been Michael Hollis, number 27. He's the one who's jumping around. And this Maryland crowd is delirious. Interesting call. It could, they're debating about whether to give the ball to Clemson or Maryland right here. I don't understand why. It has to be Maryland ball. Nobody touched it and tried to run with it after the block. They're de debating on where to spot it. No matter where they decide to spot it, Maryland has come up with what Joe Kreback had been saying yesterday, Ben, what you said throughout the telecast, another big play. 3-0-1 remaining in the first half. Maryland leading Clemson 14-10. to Back live at Bird Stadium, Maryland will take over at their own 20, first and 10 after blocking that field goal. The word we get from the sidelines is the officials apparently thought the ball went into the end zone after the block and have spotted it as a touchback. That certainly did not happen. The ball was dead at the seven-yard line. So if that's the reasoning, Maryland is going to be the beneficiary of a big break. And what else it does is that it gives Maryland some operating room. We saw earlier in the game when they were down in their own 
shadow of their own end zone. They were very conservative in their play calling. Now they're out on the 20. They can open it up a little bit more. First down from the 20 now. O'Donnell, 7 of 9 for 96 yards and a touchdown pass. Terrapins with the ball on the lead. Lowry gets maybe a yard and runs into heavy traffic. Dexter Davis and Jesse Hatcher quick to close defensively, and they kind of push Lowry around as he's getting up. I'm going to tell you who made that play, although he didn't make the tackle, was Jesse Hatcher. In addition to stringing it out, he took on two blockers and took away the entire interference from Maryland. Spinelli had nowhere to go. Four-point Maryland lead before a sellout crowd on a perfect day. Tell you what, this type of a game goes a long way to help rebuild the Maryland football program. Timeout on the field now is called by Clemson. But you talk about Joe Krivak only in his second year putting the program back together and has rebuilt this team in a hurry. A very young team that he inherited and has taken it on the threshold of winning the ACC championship. They control their own destiny. Some of the other scores from around the country, ours is 14-10 Maryland. Syracuse has battled back to take a four-point lead over B.C. That one's in the second quarter. Wake Forest has come from behind to lead uh, Georgia Tech. That one is also in the second quarter. Wake Forest with a legitimate shot at a bowl bid should they win their next couple of games. In Iowa leading Ohio State. It's been a rough year for John Cooper in his debut as the Buckeye coach in Columbus. Those folks get anxious when you start losing. Three nothing Mississippi State on the verge of upsetting LSU. Danny Ford probably disbelieving what's transpiring here thus far this afternoon. His team has made some crucial little mistakes. On third and six, they jumped offside when Maryland threw an incomplete pass, gave the Terps another shot at it. What did O'Donnell do? He threw a 24-yard touchdown pass. His place kicker, Gardaki, missed the 35-yarder, then had a 37-yarder block. Second and nine for Maryland. O'Donnell to the air. He's in trouble. That's going to be a hole. That was a takedown. And he throws it away. Well, I'm going to tell you, John Rugg, one of the offensive linemen, really did a nice job of holding. Looks like Hulk Hogan in the body slam. <laughs> and he did it right in front of the back judge. Two nineteen remaining in the half. And they'll mark it off. We have holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. That'll put it back at the ten yard line. Watching the bottom part of your screen. Well, actually it'll be in the left hand corner. There you go. Nice tackle. And it was a Mark Drag was the one who was rushing for Clemson. He had eyes on his 11th sack of the season. Had that takedown not occurred. Well, if you're Neil O'Donnell, you're not real upset because you know he's protecting you. The draw play to Johnson gets a few of those 10 back. LaVon Kirkman, number 44, dropped him. Maryland would be probably satisfied to run out the clock here if they could. Clemson still has two timeouts. I think Clemson's going to get a shot to put some points back on the board. And what going into halftime, well, you talked about an emotional boost. If they can get Gardaki back out and get him and knock one through the uprights, they'll be in good shape. Third and 17 for the Terrapins from their own 13. This game has been error-free in terms of turnovers. O'Donnell on the screen. He's got Lowry. He's got some room. Lowry to the 25, just short of the 30, which would have given them a first down. 15-yard pickup will force a punting situation. Doug Brewster made the first down saving tackle. This is a good call on third and long. This is a safe pass, and with any luck at all, you got a chance of breaking a big, big run. Brent Lowry gets his hands on the football, picks up some blocks, but you can see at the very end of the play, the Clemson guy coming in, making the tackle, saved what could have been a big, big first down. Clemson asking for a timeout. They are down to one timeout with a minute 24 left in the half. Maryland's punting team huddled around Joe Krivak. 
He doesn't want any mistakes. Don't forget to stay with us at halftime. We'll take a look around the league at what happened in the ACC a week ago. And then we'll, as always, have one for the books. We'll be looking at Randy White. And we'll get you updated on all of the college football action that's taking place around the country today. Our game, 14 to 10. Maryland leading Clemson. DeArmas on to punt. Wolford is deep around his own 34. Tell you what, they didn't miss by much in getting that one, and they allowed him to really touch it off. Back to the 22, where Wolford has to call a fair catch. So now you look at DeArmas, who makes a big play. 48-yard punt with no return. I'm going to tell you what, he thudded that ball. Woo! Dexter Davis was close to blocking it, but not so, as DeArmas gives the Maryland defensive team a lift by forcing Clemson in a bad field position with just a minute 15 remaining and the Tigers down to their last timeout. Well, now if you're Clemson, you want to get the football downfield and you want to give, your chance, give yourself a chance to score. But by the same token, you don't want to force things. You don't want to make a mistake and turn around and give Maryland the opportunity to put points on the board. And Clemson is not a good passing team. So they're doing something they don't normally do. Williams chased out of there by Edwards. Fires it complete. But Woody are able to tackle Allen inbound. Well, that'll keep the clock running. Still plenty of time. There's over a minute left. That's plenty of time for Clemson to get down and get in field goal range if they hurry. And they're not hurrying. There's the clock now under a minute remaining. They'll snap it with about 45 seconds remaining. Quickly to Jennings who drops the ball. Now it's third down. Jennings is a little more concerned with getting out of bounds than he was with catching the football. And all you need is just a momentary lapse in concentration, and you'll drop the football. So with 42 seconds remaining in the half, Danny Ford's team down four. We'll be down to a third and three. A third and two, call it. Just outside of the third. First down at the 35. They keep him inbounds near the 40. It'll stop the clock to adjust the chains, but then the clock will roll again. They need about 25 more yards to give Gardaki a realistic shot. He's got a powerful leg, however scattered it may be. When Clemson throws the football downfield, they like to go right down the middle. Look for Cooper down the middle. Chased out of there, completes it to Allen. They'll keep him in bounds, and Clemson's going to be forced maybe to use their final timeout with just 15 seconds. It's a first down, so it momentarily stops the clock. And they have used their last timeout now. Well, Clemson's going to give it one more shot, I would guess, to try to get Gardaki an opportunity. Well, while we're here, you're looking at a picture of Terry Allen. That brings up the subject, who do you think is the player of the year in the league this year? It's tough to ignore Terry Allen, who's gone over 1,000 yards, but how about Anthony Dillweg and Duke? The teams have won three consecutive conference titles. The Duke Blue Devils and Bill Murray, Jerry Claiborne, and Bobby Ross both did it at Maryland. Clemson already having won two consecutive ACC titles. Should they win today and win the ACC title outright, they would be. This would be their third consecutive. They would be in some elite company. I might mention Clemson was on probation during the portion of that three-year run that Maryland had under Bobby Ross. Each of these teams have won the conference title the last seven years. One of the two have been at the top. Williams down the middle for Allen. Whittier was waiting for him and knocked it loose with 10 seconds remaining in the half. I tell you, Rodney Williams just about got Terry Allen killed. When you're throwing the football downfield, you've got to give your receivers a chance to catch the ball before they get hit. That time, Terry Allen and uh, Scott Whittier arrived at the football at the same time. 
Williams is four out of ten for 57 yards passing the ball today. We'll go to the air again. Oh, there's Cooper. They've left him alone, and he makes the catch inside the ten. With two seconds remaining in the half. Unbelievable. Will they get the field goal team on in time to kick it? Gardaki heading out there in a hurry. They're going to get a shot at it. Now the officials step in and stop the clock, and the crowd boos lustily. Oh, bad snap. He got it up. He got it. What a great, great play. Well, we'll talk about this one. The officials moving in and stopping the clock with two seconds left to allow Clemson to get set. But how Maryland allowed Cooper to get behind everybody is beyond me with 10 seconds remaining. Well, the thing that's amazing is that they had three deep and they were way back. But the key to this play is that Rodney Williams, look at the amount of time he has to throw the football. Nobody's even near him. He gives Cooper a chance to run down the field and then delivers the ball on the money. Watch the catch, too. Turning around backwards and hitting the deck when he caught the ball. That's a great effort. Mr. Cooper, Mr. Big Play. This guy averages better than 30 yards every time he touches. Look at the bad snap. Morocco's able to get it back up on the tee. And Gardaki, who's had an up and down first half, knocks it through there and pulls Clemson to within one. Well, I'm going to tell you how important it is to appreciate your holder and what a great play that was by Gardaki because kickers, when they get just a little bit off rhythm, they tend to push or shank the ball. That time, Gardaki had to stop in the middle of his approach and still managed to get the football through the uprights. Give credit to the Clemson field goal unit that was able to hustle onto the field, too, as soon as they saw Cooper make that catch. Hey, credit the coaches for that. They had those guys ready on the sidelines. So Maryland leads it by one at halftime. Plenty coming up here at halftime. We'll be back after this message and order from your local ACC station. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions ACC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. By Coors, the original draft beer in bottles and cans. Coors, the original. By the airline of ACC country, Delta. We love to fly and it shows. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Back live at Bird Stadium on a perfect afternoon for college football. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett getting set to start the second half. 14-13, Maryland leading over Clemson. Our Toyota halftime stats, the numbers that you see that I think are the biggest of the last two. Joe Krivak said his team had to keep the football. They've done that, and neither team has made a turnover. And Ben, that's all you can ask of your team at this point. Execution is so key because not only do turnovers give the other team uh, the opportunity to take the ball back down and score, it also puts a big, big psychological edge to the team that gets the turnover. Maryland scored with its opening possession. They drove 76 yards and got in position to score from the seven, and Ricky Johnson did the rest. Watch the cut at the very end. Leaves two Clemson players in their tracks. That one was before this sellout crowd had even settled into their seats, and Maryland was on the board, and they led 7-0. But Clemson was able to answer that in a hurry on a gadget play, the end around to Gary Cooper. This is a thing of beauty. Some guys never get a chance to do something like this, and watch all the people that he makes miss on this run. One. That was the big one because he was stopped for a loss Two. there. Three and four. Five at the very end. Individual was all game-breaking speed. 52 yards to the touchdown. Celebration a little premature, but it paid off nonetheless. That tied it at seven. Clemson took a 10-7 lead. Then Danny Ford's team struggled and sputtered and stopped themselves, really. They drove five times deep into Maryland territory. Could only convert on the one touchdown and two field goals, one which came with two seconds left at the end of the half. Joe Krivak's team, on the other hand, crossed midfield only twice, but they scored touchdowns each time. So they have the 14-13 lead, and Plocky will kick off to Clemson as we are set for the second half to begin. Joe Krivak's team on the verge of the ACC title. 
Joe Henderson has dropped deep along with Wesley McFadden for Clemson. If Clemson wins, they're the ACC champs. If Maryland wins, they clinch a tie for the title and can win it outright with a victory over Virginia next week. We're underway in the second half, and Flocky drives it into the end zone and out. So Clemson will have to start from its own 20. Blocky, who is 90 for 90 on conversions in his career, is the leading scorer in the conference, the leading field goal kicker. So you got to feel confident if it comes down to a field goal for Maryland that Blocky will convert it. And you know that he wants to be in a position like that. Although kickers are kind of fickle, they want the opportunity to win it at the end of the game. He won it for Maryland as a freshman in a game against Clemson that won the ACC title. Tracy Johnson up the middle. He gets about four. You know, Clemson's coaching staff telling us before the game that look for Tracy Johnson to carry the ball a lot today because they felt they could attack Maryland up the gut. But that hasn't been the case, man. Well, but you got to keep trying it. And when you got a player of Tracy Johnson's uh, substantial talent, you're going to keep banging. They didn't run him very much in the first half, but they may be serving notice as to what they're up to here in the second half. He only just carried them all three times. There is Jennings who makes a sliding catch as he falls down at the 32 and gives Clemson a first down. You know, Kevin, we've seen this play about three or four times earlier. All Rodney Williams is, is doing is going down the line. He makes a fake. If Jennings is open, he stands up and drills it. They've run this very successfully, but don't be surprised if later on in the game they run a hook and go where Williams pumps him on the hook and he turns and goes up the sidelines. Jennings has caught three today for 30 yards, keeping alive his consecutive game streak now at 14 with at least one catch. Oh, Johnson met by Larry Webster just as he takes the handoff. Webster, a 270-pound freshman from Elkton, Maryland. We were talking about substantial talent on the, hand, on the part of Tracy Johnson. Nobody's going to be a talented running back when you get hit that quickly by somebody that big. 5 and 270 and a freshman. Four years of terror throughout the ACC are coming up for running backs and quarterbacks. Second and eight for Clemson. Allen with his first carry of the second half. Gets around the corner and gets near the 40 before he's knocked out of bounds. Rick Fleece, number 96, the nose guard, and Irvin Smith, number 7, run him out. Allen going over 1,000 yards rushing for the season in the first half, the first sophomore in Clemson history. And deservedly so. You can see why this kid is so highly regarded in the ACC and around the country. He doesn't waste any motion when he gets his hands on the football. It's north and south. Pick up what you can. Try for a little extra at the end. You can see he's done that well today. From the 43rd down and three. Maryland's blitzing. They run the fullback. Johnson breaks the tackle into the open in midfield. Inside the 35 of Maryland. Sidner saves the touchdown and the all or nothing gamble on the blitz goes Clemson's way with a 27-yard jump by Tracy Johnson. You run it, it gets stuck. You run it, it gets stuck. You run it against the blitz. Johnson pops out and picks up a big gain because the defensive backs are all in man-to-man -man coverage. They don't see him until late. That's what allows him to get that much yardage into the secondary. That 27-yard run by Johnson, his longest of the season. Matt D'Amico nearly had him at the line, but he was able to break that shoulder tackle. First down now at the 34 of Maryland. Here goes Allen. Cuts it back. Oh, he runs right in to Bradford, number 47. And one of the few times the first man with a chance at Allen is able to bring him down. But you also notice at the end of the run, although Bradford was bringing him down, he spun over and still dove ahead for extra yards. That's a sign of a well-coached back. You can have a guy with all the natural talent in the world, but unless he's been coached to do the proper things and do the little things, he's not going to be as good as he could be. Reminds me a lot of Roger Craig with the 49ers. Same kind of leg drive, always going forward. Never stopping. Here goes McFadden, the fullback. He gets three or four inside the 30. Close to a first down, but about two yards short. 
Now, you want to talk about what kind of talent Clemson has and what kind of depth they have? McFadden started out as a tailback, and in his very first start, he rushed for 226 yards and two touchdowns against Virginia Tech. And they had enough talent that they needed to move him to back up fullback. Well, they've had enough talent today that on each of their six possessions, they've been in scoring territory. And here they are again. Third down and three. Last time, Maryland Blitz. They're not going to do it this time. Fullback Johnson, very, very close. It looks as though he has it. Rick Fleece and Scott Whitty are riding Johnson. Well, you know, people talk about the, the Sports Illustrated jinx. You're on the cover and you don't, you know, something that happens bad to you next week. Tracy Johnson had converted 19 straight until last week when he was on the cover of the program and he missed. This will be his 21st shot at it. We'll see if he's got 21, 20 out of 21. It appears that he has it from where the ball was marked on the far side, but they're going to bring the chains out and measure. And even if he doesn't have it, Ben, I would suspect he's close enough that Danny Ford would go for it on fourth down, but he has it, so there's no decision to make. And that's amazing statistic. 19 times in a row on third or fourth down and short yardage, they gave the ball to Tracy Johnson, and he picked up the first down. Last week was the first time he'd been stopped in 20 attempts in that in situation. The rushing numbers are very heavily in Clemson's favor, but not the score. Maryland leads by one. Terry Allen, great block on the corner by McFadden. Allen able to cut it up inside the 20. You know, Terry Allen does so many things that a lot of other running backs don't do, and they just seem to come naturally for him. As he runs the ball, watch at the end of the run. First of all, watch the block by McFadden out front. There you can see it just in the right-hand corner. But watch Allen as he goes down. He puts his hand on the ground to keep his balance and move forward for yards. Give a lot of credit to Scott Saylor, number 46. He got wiped out by the block and got back up and made the tackle. Allen straight up the middle near the 10-yard line has another Clemson first down. Well, this is a calling card type of drive where they take the opening kickoff of the second half, jam it down your throat, and leave notice to all out on the field that Clemson is trying to take command of this game. Well, any coach worth his salt will tell you that the opening drive of the second half sets the tone for the rest of the game. And they've kept it now for five minutes. First down at the 12. again. Heading for Pater. Inside the five. Still running out of the one. He has another first down. Maryland's one-point lead is on the verge of being overtaken. The key to this play is great blocking by the offensive line and effort by Terry Allen. Watch at the very end of the play. He gets hit and keeps his legs driving. Look at the knees. Trying to get as much yards as he can to get into the end zone. Great run. This drive started at the Clemson 20. I wonder if Tracy Johnson will get the football here. Touchdown Clemson as Johnson carries it in. So the seesaw battle now has Clemson ahead as they go up 19-14 with a conversion to come. I'm sure Maryland wasn't surprised by this ball. They just couldn't stop it. When you got a line, the size and the strength that Clemson has, the Dunamacher, Harmon, Back, Fletch, and Deulius, Tracy Johnson gets his hands on the football. He's going to reach pay dirt. And they're going to go for two. Watch, watch the inside receiver. Watch Hooper go into the corner here. He is number 26. They run it with Johnson, and he makes it. Boy, he just carried a tackler in there with it. This is the touchdown run. Watch Tracy Johnson. When he gets down close, he's going to get his body into the end zone. So what do they do on the extra point? They turn around and give it back to their big bruiser, Tracy Johnson. So he picks up eight points in a hurry. Hey, I tell you what, this shows you what kind of confidence they have in Tracy Johnson and their offensive line. Clemson goes up seven with that conversion, 21-14. We'll be back with more ACC football in a moment.
Tracy Johnson just scored a touchdown, then carried it in for a two-point conversion. Clemson retakes the lead, 21-14. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett live here in Bird Stadium, and you look at the scoring drive. Kevin, look, it, interesting question. What does a guy this size and that powerful do for entertainment when he's not on the football field? I don't know. He's a, he's a great cook, and he plays chess. Yeah, what happens if you tell him he don't like his food? You, <laughs> you better eat it. Kyle kicking off into what has become somewhat of a stiff breeze now from the 13-yard line. Lowry bringing it back for Maryland. Sees a seam and heads up to the 33-yard line. Before he's brought down over there, a 21-yard return. gets his hands on the football and he ought to take Dennis Spinelli out to lunch. Spinelli was the one who made this, the block downfield that allowed him to get through there. Good run by Lowry. Gives Maryland good field position. They'll operate from the 33. O'Donnell runs out of the huddle to under center. He's anxious to get going. He had to sit for five and a half minutes of this half while Clemson drove the length of the field to score a touchdown. And he's going to keep it himself but he doesn't get too far. So maybe two before Ed McDaniel, number 93, dropped him. Yeah, I spoke about Neil O'Donnell having almost 300 yards rushing coming into the game. The majority of those yards are not picked up on the option. They don't do the option exclusively like Clemson does. Most of O'Donnell's yards are after he's gone back and hasn't been able to find anybody open downfield and makes himself, makes himself scarce to Clemson tacklers moving up into the line. Second and nine after he got one. O'Donnell will throw. Big rush. Chases him out. Great move. Great move by O'Donnell. He only gets it upfield to about the 37, but I'll tell you what, he avoided about an eight-yard loss. No sooner said than done. This is what Neil O'Donnell does so well, and it's a, it's a tremendous dimension added to your offense when you have a quarterback of his ability. Again, looking downfield, nobody's open, does a great job to avoid the sack, and then further takes the ball upfield and gains yardage. He can't coach that. That's just great individual effort. Hammond and Kirkland were putting the pressure on him, and it was Jesse Hatcher that brought him down. He spotted at the 38-yard line. He'll bring up a third and six. Quick snap. O'Donnell tucks. He's going to get the first down and then some. He's at the 45 and ducks out of bounds at the 49. The crowd wants a flag as two Clemson players went sailing into the Maryland bench trying to get after O'Donnell. Joe Kreback telling the referees that he wants the flag. One of the coaches got knocked to the turf. Watch the entire defense flow to the left side of your screen. O'Donnell's looking that way, pumps the football, and then picks up the yardage. At the end, watch Beasley take a shot. It wasn't a vicious shot. There's no penalty there. Probably should have been a clip, though, because he knocked one of the coaches down from behind. From the 48-yard line, O'Donnell's Maryland Terrapins with a first down. The toss to Ricky Johnson in trouble. Evades one tackler and gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe even gains a yard. Knifing through there was Vince Taylor, number 58. And although he didn't make the tackle, Vince Taylor was the one who disrupted this play. Watch Taylor get up inside, make Johnson have to readjust his route, try to cut the, cut back inside, and he cuts right back in the container. Second and nine. Maryland trying to answer Clemson's touchdown drive. The draw play to Spinelli. He's in Clemson territory, dropped as he gets to about the 47-yard line. Everybody had a hand in there. Richard McCullough, number 96, was there, as was Mervyn Green, number 99. Joe Kreback on the verge of an ACC championship, but his team will have to come from behind to do it. They trail by 7, 21-14, with 6.45 left in the third quarter after they let it happen. This is a team that knows how to come from behind and win football games. They've done it on several occasions this year. Third and six now to Clemson 47. Clemson's in a blitz. 
O'Donnell gets time. Flag is down. O'Donnell has the first down and inside the 35. The flag was thrown way over on the near side of the field in the Clemson secondary. He picked up 15 and has the first down, but let's wait for the penalty call. I think it might be defensive holding, which would, of course, be declined after O'Donnell, who has picked up most of the yardage on this drive, has given Maryland another first down. Let's wait and see what they call. to sort it out. Which may mean that it's against Maryland. Because if it were against Clemson, it would be naturally declined. It is holding against Clemson. So they'll come. Well, I'll tell you what happened, Clevin. When they came up in the blitz coverage, it put your defensive backs in man-to-man -man coverage. And if they're trying not to get beat, a lot of times they'll grab somebody. We have defensive holding. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. Whoa, that's what they were talking about. Danny Ford is not happy at all. Well, you know, lost in, in the in the whole fray here was a great effort by Neil O'Donnell against the blitz. He hung in there, waited for his receiver to come open. When he didn't, he didn't hang around very long. He scrambled outside, moved upfield. He's run for 30 yards on this drive. They have a first down at the 21 yard line. down again. Incomplete intended for Spinelli. The penalties have really hurt Clemson. Remember they allowed Maryland to score a touchdown in the first half after they had stopped them on third down. There's an offside penalty. The next play Maryland scores. Now look. I think you're going to see another offside penalty here. Danny Ford is screaming. This is a veteran defensive team but he doesn't expect that kind of mistake out of we have the defense offside five yard penalty still be first down well you know the, the the killer about that is that they're not jumping they're lining up offsides and he's danny ford is still screaming at his team and you certainly can't blame him that is frustrating as a coach first and five now for maryland that makes it a little easier the toss back to ricky johnson in trouble he's in real trouble well, he lost that five almost. Ed McDaniel broke through number 93 and had some help from Jesse Hatcher, but there are a whole lot of white jerseys surrounding Ricky Johnson that time. Yeah, you're talking about Jesse Hatcher. Interesting note on Hatcher is that one week in the year or one week in a month, he serves in the Army National Guard. He lost four of those yards back keep busy they've scored touchdowns each of the two times they've been in Clemson territory this is their third time a half back pass joins was covered Johnson tucks it under and Levant Kirkland brings him down but give credit to James Lott number five in the secondary he went right after Vernon Jones and stayed with him you know, some people in the stadium were booing the call. That's a great, great call. When you've got a defense that's pursuing as quickly as Clemson is, they're very susceptible to the reverse and to the halfback pass. You saw on third and short, they faked the run into the middle and threw a touchdown pass. You can have the same effect when you throw a halfback pass down this close, especially if you get a blitz, which is what Clemson has done a lot of down here. Frustrating for the Turks. It was first and five, and it's now third and 14. This ball moving in the wrong direction. O'Donnell guns it to Spinelli, who drops the ball. Well, that means plucky time. And the guy who leads the ACC in scoring as well as field goals will trot out there and attempt what appears to be about a 42-yard field goal. Now, this is where he becomes inconsistent, though. He's 9 of 9 up to the 39-yard line. But when you push him back a little bit, like he is now, he's only 6 of 10 from this distance. It's dead in the center of the field, though. And this is going to be a big swing of emotion either way. 42 yards out. A 
I'll tell you what. That ball couldn't have been straighter. Right down Main Street, 21-17 now. Maryland trails with 4.22 left in the third quarter. So, Lockie, Mr. Consistent, gets Maryland three points. We'll be back with more after this message and a word from your local ACC stations. On a perfect day in College Park, Kevin Slayton, Ben Bennett, we have the kind of game we hope for to decide the ACC championship. Clemson leading by four with 4.22 remaining in the third quarter. Lockie set the kick. Henderson and McFadden are deep. Well, the only time we've seen Joe Henderson is on kick returns today. This is McFadden at the three. Deep. Oh, it gets to, bounces out. Still on his feet. And Carl Edwards drops him at the 25. I don't know how he bounced out of there. Two men hit him simultaneously, and he still was able to keep going. And you talk about little things being big. Carl Edwards hanging on to him coming out of that pile. Boy, you talk about devastating. If he breaks out of there and takes it the distance, Maryland may not ever get back in the game. If you look at the scoring drive, we saw that very thing happen in Virginia earlier in the season when Georgia Tech had seemingly beaten the Cavaliers, only to have on a kickoff return the same thing happen. In that instance, he broke out and kept going. First down, Clemson from their own 25. Here comes Terry Allen. Hey, there's not a lot of mystery to Clemson's offense, but there is a lot of execution. Chad Sidner, number 19, was over there to keep Allen from going any further. You know, you mentioned things that kind of go unnoticed. Keith Jennings downfield blocking on Irvin Smith. Irvin Smith is 5'11", 180. Keith Jennings is 6'4", 235. I guess you could probably turn that a mismatch. Now that's not fair. First time in a while that Clemson has had the ball with the lead. Second and two after an eight-yard pickup. They've outgained Maryland by nearly 150 total yards. But they lead by just four. McFadden up the middle makes a nice adjustment. And it took a tackle by Mark Walsh, number 42, to stop him from getting any further. First down at the 40. To stop Clemson, you have to get off of the blocks, and you have to make their backs run side to side. Maryland is catching the offensive lineman and not attacking. And subsequently, McFadden's picking up some big yards. 345 left in the third quarter, and Maryland's defensive team has been on the field nearly the entire period, except for that field goal drive by the Turks. Williams has his man wide open, James Pollard at the 42 of Maryland. With a big tight end, 6'5", 245, just streaked down there. It's the first time they've thrown to their tight end all day. Like I said earlier, when Clemson throws the football, they like to throw it down the middle. Williams makes a good fake, stands tall in the pocket, and drills James Coley. Coley makes a great catch and does a super job to hang on to the football after he gets pelted by Chad Sidner. First down to 42, and Maryland is going to have to stop Clemson somewhere along the line if they're to hang on in this game. Here goes Allen. Big hole on the left side, inside the 35, down to the 33 yard line. Scott Whittier, number 38, was there defensively, as was Kevin Fox, number two. You know, if you're a defensive coordinator, you have to ask yourself, what do, what do I have to do to get my kids fired up and get them to stop Clemson? Now, earlier we said they needed a big play. Warren Powers came through from behind and made a big play, got Maryland's defense fired up. Clemson missed a field goal. If they try to blitz, they can make the big play or they can have the big play work against them. There have not been any turnovers to this point by either team. That is also the type of thing that could work in Maryland's favor if it would occur. But there's Williams ducking close to the first down. Fox came up out of the secondary, number two, to drop it. You almost get the feeling if there is a turnover by either team, it would be devastating to the team that commits. Well, you know, Clemson is up towards the top of the country as far as giveaway takeaways go. They're averaging a plus 1.67 a game. And it doesn't sound like, well, it's only a couple turnovers. But that gives you the opportunity as well as the momentum. Maryland is a plus eight overall for the season, so both teams do not give it up any more than they get it back. Here is a third and one. Who do you think we'll see carry the football? Johnson. Who else? Oh, he went outside. They had him stopped, but 
but that big bruiser just kept going forward. Mark Walsh hit him first, but if they spot it where Johnson ended up, he's got a first down. I'm going to tell you what, Ruber has it that he makes a mean set of muffins. Well, watch the effort that he has on this play. He gets hit behind the line and manages to spin and fall forward. That's going to be awful close. Got to have it. Yeah. When he fell forward, there was no doubt. So Clemson retains possession with a minute 36 left in the quarter. And Big Tracy has done a good job today. A senior out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. More than 30 pounds he packs into those muscles. Well, you know, one of the interesting things is he takes well, he takes a great deal of pride in his blocking as well as he does his running. First down, Tigers for the Terrapin 31. Here goes Allen, flags fly. Allen dropped as he gets inside the 30. Maryland's defensive team needs all the help it can get. And they're going to get five yards with the help for an illegal procedure penalty. I would hate to be in the offensive meeting room with Danny Ford come tomorrow. Penalties have hurt Clemson all day. We had the illegal procedure on the offense. Six men on the line. Well, that's the kind of thing you really don't see very often. 118 left third quarter, four point Clemson lead. We'll be back to Bird Stadium after this message and a word from your local ACC station. I said earlier, Norman Rockwell couldn't paint a prettier picture. And you look at it here at College Park today on a gorgeous autumn afternoon as Clemson and Maryland play for the ACC championship. Clemson leads it by four with 118 left in the third quarter. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Glad you could be with us along with a sellout crowd here at Bird Stadium. Clemson on the attack with a first down and 15 from the 36th of Maryland. Rodney Williams gets to the 32. Rick Fleece, number 96, chased him down from behind. Wouldn't surprise me to see Clemson go back to the play that's been very successful for him. The down the line option where Williams just stands up and pops a wide receiver. The only time Maryland has stopped that today is when a defensive lineman got his hand on the football. Gary Cooper is in the game. All he's done today is run 52 yards on an end around for a touchdown and then catch the long pass at the end of the first half with a leaping grab inside the 10 to set up a field goal at the, at the gun. So watch him. There's Ben calling it to Jennings. And he is, does he have the first down or is he shy of? They run it to the short side of the field and they'll spot him about a yard short. Now you set up third and short. This is the play we were talking about. Rodney Williams comes down the line. If he sees the coverage that he wants, he just stands up and guns the ball to Jennings. And a target that size is tough to miss. You know, Ben, there are a few teams in this country that are as predictable offensively as Clemson. Yet, with that execution and the talent they have, they're virtually unstoppable. Essentially, what they do is they say, hey, this is what we're going to do. See if you can stop us. Third and one. See if Maryland can stop them here. Tracy Johnson will get it here. No, Williams tucks it in himself. So in all of the short yardage plays, they've given the ball to Tracy Johnson. This time, they fake it to him. He got tackled for a loss, by the way. <laughs> well, the key to the whole thing, and, and it was interesting that you would say that, well, Tracy Johnson's going to get the football, is just like when Maryland had third and short and faked the run. If you go with conventional thinking, a lot of times you can, you can second guess yourself. If you try and use that to your advantage, sometimes it'll work out for a big, big plus. The third quarter will be coming to an end. Five seconds ticking away. Clemson has the lead, and they're on the attack as they're knocking on Maryland's door at the 13-yard line with the first down. So Clemson will take a four-point lead in the final 15 minutes. They're that close to an ACC championship.
Bird Stadium, 11-point Clemson lead. We're just into the fourth quarter. Don't forget the announcer of this game, approved and selected by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, unauthorized duplication or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Clemson ready to kick off after taking it in to take the 28-17 lead. And now Neil O'Donnell is going to have to pull off a patented Maryland miracle. And they can do it. They've been behind several times this season and managed to come back and win. Lowry at the two. He looked to see if he was in the end zone. And he comes out short of the 20. That little hesitation may have cost him some extra yardage. It was interesting. I, I don't know if he knew exactly where he was on the field. I've never seen that before. But they're a yard shy of the 20. And I'll have to start from there as Mitch Belton dropped him before he could get to the 20. Well, the big key for Maryland here is to realize they don't have to get it all back in one fell swoop. Just do the things that they've been doing well this afternoon. Execute, not turn the football over. They'll be all right. First down. Green in motion. O'Donnell for the air. Nice safe pass out to Lowry. Wolford trips him up and he crosses the 20. Maryland has been outgained 160 to 29 here in the second half. This is only the second possession for the Terps since they went into the locker room. That's another thing, Ben. You start thinking maybe they're a little rusty. <laughs> well, you know, there is a breeze blowing and it's kind of nippy out there. And when you start, when you stand on the sidelines for a long time, you tend to get tight and you get out of your rhythm. down pass. A nice safe one to get O'Donnell loose again. They go. Oh, it's intercepted by Kirkland. Inside the 15. He's heading for a touchdown, but he's dropped short. Inside the five. Lavon Kirkland with his first interception of the year. Blaine Rose saved the touchdown, but that may be only momentary. First turnover of the game, and he threw it right to him. Never saw him. You know, I missed this call by one play. O'Donnell, I don't think, ever saw Kirkland because if he had, he probably wouldn't have thrown the football. And the thing that you don't realize if you're watching the game at home, when you're in the pocket and there's people in front of you, you can't see everybody. Somebody downfield can disappear behind the helmet that's right in front of you. Kirkland drop, gets a good drop, gets his hands on the football. It looks like Tracy Johnson running from the end zone. First and goal for Clemson. First turnover of the game by either team. Marking another touchdown. Terry Allen. He takes it in from four yards out. Danny Ford's looking a little bit happier now than he was earlier this afternoon. Sees a trip to the Florida Citrus Bowl well within his grasp now. Eighth rushing touchdown of the year for Terry Allen. Sile for the conversion. 35-17, Clemson in the lead. You know, you talk all day about how Maryland has executed. First mistake they make, this is what happens. Clemson says, hey, Terry, see what you can do. He gets his hands on the football. There's no jumping to this one. He's going to punish somebody on his way into the end zone. And again, Chip Davis downfield keeps the defensive back off balance. 13-48 remains. The uphill battle for Maryland has just gotten steeper. We'll return to Bird Stadium for more ACC action in a moment. Stadium, Kevin Slate and Ben Bennett in a game that would decide the ACC championship. Clemson, after an interception by LeVon Kirkland, has gone in again, and they now lead 35-17. A few moments ago, it was 21-17. How quickly things change. Well, you know, we spoke right before the last Maryland drive and said they don't have to try and get it all back in one fell swoop. They've got plenty of time. Well, now they've got to score three times to get back into this football game and have a chance to win it. Now time becomes a big factor. They have demonstrated throughout the season that they can score in a hurry. O'Donnell has touchdown passes this year of 66, 72, and 77 yards. So 
they've got the big play capabilities. It's just a matter of whether they'll do it or not. A side winding kickoff rolls out of bounds. And they'll have to do it again. Don't forget our games next Saturday. North Carolina battles Duke in that interstate rivalry. Twelve noon. Five yard penalty. And Maryland and Virginia. If you don't see the North Carolina Duke game, you'll either see Maryland and Virginia or South Carolina at Clemson. That one's a one o'clock start, and that is where Ben and I will be. And you want to talk about three wars? That, I mean, you're talking fight to the death when these teams get together. Virginia and Maryland right back to back. They don't like each other very much. And you know Clemson and South Carolina are not best of buddies. Joe Freeback told me yesterday time of possession would be important. He was able to hold his own in the first half, but in the second half, it's almost two to one in favor of Clemson. Clemson has scored 22 points in the second half to just three. Sile backed up five yards, knocks it into the end zone, and here's a late decision by Lowry to come out. And he barely gets across the 20. So now the work is cut out for Neil O'Donnell. Sile heads to the sidelines. They need one of those patented long pass plays for a touchdown. Well, what they need to do, right, they don't need to take real big chances, but they need to start pitching the ball downfield and trying to get as many, and trying to get points quickly. Oh, he flips it outside to Beasley, who is in trouble at the original line of scrimmage. That's not the kind of play that'll get it done in a hurry. Richard McCullough over there to drop him, number 96. Well, when you got a back like Beasley, he can turn a short pass into a long gain. But you got to remember, you're playing against a very, very experienced and an extremely talented Clemson defense. That second area there matches up with any in the country. Davis, Lott, Beasley, and Wolford. Wolford, of course, the fourth trophy candidate. He and Beasley are the only seniors in that second area. O'Donnell thrown it behind Dean Green. Dexter Davis, who's a freshman, was right with him. <laughs> How good do you think he'll be in four years? They just keep plugging him in out there. We talked about earlier about when Neil O'Donnell throws on rhythm, he's been perfect. When, he, when they've gotten him off of his rhythm a little bit, he's missed. That time he had his receiver open early, Dean Green, but he had to move outside a little bit farther than he wanted to, forced him to deliver the ball late, subsequently had to throw it behind him to avoid the interception. He's 10 of 15 for 115 yards, a touchdown, and one costly interception that set up a Clemson touchdown. That happened moments ago. Clemson faking the blitz on third down. O'Donnell flushed out of there, and he hits the deck at the 26-yard line. That'll be short of the first down, and they'll have to punt it away. Richard McCullough pressuring him. Not a bad time for a fake field goal. Or even a fake punt. Or a fake punt. Yeah, that, either one. <laughs> either one of the two would be real effective right about now. I don't think you'd fool him much if you lined up for a field goal here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm a little bit surprised they're even showing a punt. You're down 18 with 12 and a half minutes left, and your defense hasn't shown an ability to stop him. They blocked it anyway. The Armis had he been able to pick it up, may have run for the first down. Jerome Henderson blocked it, and he came through untouched. So now breakdowns in all phases of the Maryland attack starting to cost them. This wasn't a design block. They really had everybody setting up the return. He gets in there, gets his hands on the ball. If the Armist had been able to hang on to this football, the other 10 guys from Clemson had gone back to set up the wedge for Wolford. Just a great individual effort by Jerome Henderson. Clemson with Morocco in there now. Hey, they've, they've decided this game's over. Here comes Cooper. Look at him. He'll take it in. That guy's unbelievable. Every time he touches the ball, it's double digits. When it rains, it pours. 20-yard touchdown run for Cooper. He scored on 
two end arounds today. How many times did you see that happen in one game? You know, like I said earlier, it's, it looks like a gadget play. A lot of people say, ah, oh, they're trying to trick Maryland. But in reality, that's a very, very integral part of their offense. Because they run the football so well, and we keep saying how they just run the same plays and execute them, when you throw in a wrinkle like that, nine times out of ten, it's going to be successful. Sile for the conversion, 42-17. Remember, it was 21-17 after three quarters. And we haven't even played three full minutes of the, of the fourth quarter. You can see on the reverse, it's the same play he scored on earlier. He makes a great move to stay outside, and then the downfield block is what gets him into the end zone. They've scored three touchdowns in less than three minutes. Give a lot of credit to Eric Harmon. We'll be back with more ACC action in a moment. Back live at Bird Stadium. Clemson has exploded for 21 points in less than three minutes to turn what was a very good game into a rout. Anytime you play Clemson, you understand that they're a, a, an explosive just waiting to be detonated because they can run up just this kind of score so quickly, it's scary. They intercepted a pass and set their offense up with first and goal, then they blocked the punt and set them up with a 20. Those two touchdown drives lasted all of four and eight seconds. And the hitting continues to be vicious on special teams. Wayne Harps, who's made two big hits today, number 16 for Clemson, does it again. You know, I watched him the whole way down because he was the one that laid that big hit on Lowry a couple of kickoffs ago. And I watched him, and boy, he ran through and avoided two blockers, had his eye on the on the ball carrier the whole way, and got in and made the tackle. You can't ask for anything more than that. A lot of the sellout crowd is headed for the exits after that last Clemson touchdown. Exactly 12 minutes left. Lowry cuts to the sideline. You have to wonder if Maryland's kind of given up the fight here and said to themselves, well, Clemson wins the ACC championship. They, if they're going to have a chance to win this thing, they need to start pitching the ball around and they need to throw it downfield. Way downfield. Several times way downfield. <laughs> and they need to hit a few. Second down. They run it again. Ricky Johnson gets a first down and gets to the 35, and those folks that have stayed here won't like the play call. Maryland had the lead at halftime, 14-13, but the Clemson offense has just been too consistent against the Maryland defense here in the second half. They have just simply overpowered them. They took the opening kickoff in the second half and drove in for a touchdown. Ben mentioned at that point that the first five minutes of the second half dictates the remainder of the game. It was never more true than it was here today. O'Donnell on first down has it batted away. Great defensive work that time from Reggie Harris, number 24, the junior out of Gaffney, South Carolina. He got his hands up and knocked it down. Some of the other scores from around the country, Syracuse and Boston College have been waging a war all day. The Orangemen have an eight-point lead. Wake leads Georgia Tech by just three. It's a whale of a game there. Ohio State has come from two touchdowns behind to tie Iowa in the third quarter. LSU struggling over Mississippi State. They lead by four. How about that one? North Carolina State with a one-point lead over Duke in the third quarter. The winner of that game is probably going to get a bid to the All-American Bowl. O'Donnell. Shaken tackler goes down at about the 36-yard line. Mervyn Green, number 99, in on the play for Clemson. And we were talking about the NC State Duke game. It looks like the winner of that game will go down to the All-American Bowl and fa face the winner of the Florida-Kentucky game. Florida and Kentucky playing today. Their game started later than ours. That one is at Kentucky. You gotta like the Wildcats at home, and that Florida has really fallen on some hard times after a 4-0 start. Down the middle they go to Johnson. He eludes a tackler and is very close to a first down. Ed McDaniel in the stop. 
for Clemson. Nine yard pickup. Johnson made a great move after the catch to make sure that he didn't get knocked out. Because had he caught the ball and turned straight up the field, both of Clemson linebackers had a beat on the back of his head. Officials asked for a timeout. They're going to measure and see if they've got the first down. When you look at the Maryland football program, there's the Tiger knocking the turf out, as has <laughs> happened on the field also. When you look at Maryland, you have to think the help is needed defensively. They have given up some big numbers this year in terms of yardage and points. They're a little bit shy of the first down here, but that offensive unit, most of which returns intact next season. They'll lose Vernon Jones, the senior wide receiver, but everybody else with the exception of left guard Rich Nelson is back. But defensively, they need some work. That's the way it has gone today. You see the explosion in the fourth quarter, two of those touchdowns. One set up by an interception return to the four-yard line, another by a blocked punt at the 20. Fourth and short. O'Donnell just ducks his head and picks up the first down. Boy, you got to love that. When it's crunch time, give it to your most dependable, intestinally tough player. Give it to your quarterback. Whatever works. 42-17, <laughs> Clemson. I'll tell you what, the Florida Citrus Bowl scouts in attendance here today have to love what they're seeing in terms of their representative in the Florida Citrus Bowl. Clemson with a good chance at enhancing their national image. If they can win today by the large score that they've posted and win again next week against South Carolina. They came into today's game ranked 16th. Should be a great game next week. South Carolina, although they're coming off of some serious trouble at Florida State, they'll always be up for Clemson. 9.32 remaining. We'll return for more ACC football after you see this. Back live, Bird Stadium, and Clemson Band is happy. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Maryland had the lead at halftime in this game. But all nine times, Clemson has been in Maryland the territory today that they've had possession. So that sort of tells the story about the way their offense has dominated the Maryland defense. Maryland, on the other hand, trying to get something going here with nine and a half minutes left. They run it with Ricky Johnson. He's in across midfield in the Clemson territory. LeVon Kirkland, number 44, made the tackle. Danny Ford getting a lot of playing time now for his backup people. Of course, he, play, he goes about 22 deep defensively every game anyway, at least. They get guys coming in there with the same numbers and no names on the back of their jersey. You know he's getting some playing time for his younger kids. Second down pass play. Goes it for Lowry. Has it. Eludes Smith on the sideline. And he stepped out of bounds in the 38-yard line. So they'll have a first down. Maryland led 14-13 at the half. Clemson took the opening second half kickoff and marched 80 yards to a touchdown by Tracy Johnson. Then they went for two, and they've never look back only a field goal by Maryland interrupted the four touchdown second half spree by Clemson and remember the big play on that touchdown drive was the fourth and one Tracy Johnson O'Donnell takes the sack back of the 43 give credit to the secondary they had everybody covered which if you know Clemson secondary is no big surprise If you're Neil O'Donnell here, you're down by a country mile. You got to think to yourself, hey, maybe I'll just throw this one up and hope I get a jump ball. But he decides to hang on to the football, and that's what happens when you do. Second and 15 after a five-yard loss. Joe Kreebeck had his team fired up at the start. They took the opening kickoff and drove 76 yards and scored. That got Clemson's attention in a hurry. Nearly picked off, as it is, Richard Smith makes a great play. Here's a guy that makes a play like that, and he can't even get any playing time. <laughs> Penalty flag is down. <laughs> the 
officials talk it over and the fans on this side of the field on those metal bleachers with the sun going down. They're getting cold. They're huddling. And some of them are heading out. Ineligible receiver downfield. But we'll see what Clemson elects to do. 8.03 remaining. 42-17. Clemson in the lead. We have an ineligible offensive team downfield. Five-yard penalty. Virginia shutting out North Carolina in the second quarter in Chapel Hill. I'll tell you what, Virginia may, be, may well be bowl-bound. That's a team that's gunning for the fourth straight win would go to six and four. Next Saturday, North Carolina battles Duke. You'll see that one at noon, or Maryland goes to Virginia. Also a noon kickoff. Or South Carolina at Clemson. That game kicks off at 1 o'clock all Eastern time. Check your local listings to see which game you'll see in your area. But Virginia has very quietly run up what looks to be four consecutive victories. They had that big lead in their game. Look at Lott. Talk about a sure tackle. You know, no matter what happens in a game, if you've got confidence in your defense and confidence in the players in your secondary, they're going to make some big hits. When you got a lead like this, all you have to do is sit back and wait for something to happen, wait for somebody to come to you, and you're going to be able to lay some good leather to them. Fourth and 12 from the Clemson 40. Clemson linebacker for eight yards deep. There's Jones with a leaping catch at the 20. Still on his feet. He gets to the 15. And that's the kind of effort that Maryland players put out for Joe Kreback. I mean, the game is, the decision is not in doubt. And here a fourth down pass play. He could just take the catch and go down at the 20. But Vernon Jones fighting for the five extra yards. 25-yard pass play. Well, you know, even though they're getting beat pretty badly, there's a lot of pride in these guys. They don't want to look bad in front of their hometown fans. They especially don't want to look bad on TV. They're going to give every possible bit of effort that they have up until the final gun. You can count on that. And that gun is six minutes and 50 seconds away from going off. Ricky Johnson over the right side, close to the 10 as he fights his way down there. Vance Hammond, number 90, on the top of the pile. One of the things you hope now, and both coaches will tell you this, if you get into a game that's this far out of hand, you hope you can come out of it healthy. Clemson, obviously, because they've got bowl aspirations, they've got some more, they got the game with South Carolina next weekend, and Maryland's got to play Virginia next weekend. You don't want to get your kids all banged up. to Joins and Hatcher chases him out of there. That broke up the timing and now Joins just goes out of bounds. Drag finally chased him out but it was Hatcher that got through there to break it up. Joe Krivak was saying yesterday that it's like old times again at Maryland playing for a championship game. It's been a disappointing outcome but look at the season overall for Maryland. It's been a good one. You can see on the reverse Jesse Hatcher staying at home breaking up the play. Joins really had nowhere to go. You know Jesse Hatcher was a junior college transfer and when he played in the National Junior College All-Star Game, he was the MVP as a linebacker. Tell you something about his impact on the game. Third and 12 now for O'Donnell. Has the time, throws for the end zone, and it's intercepted by Wolford, but he's out of bounds. Intended for David Carr, the tight end. You want to talk about a, a guy that can get up off of the grass. Watch the leap to get this interception. Again, Wolford's just laying back, waiting for something to happen. He's got good coverage. O'Donnell delivers the ball late. Wolford, look, woo! Michael Jordan would love to have that vertical right there. That's the kind of ability that make the pro scouts just drool. I tell you, they got a picture of him on the cover of their press guide going up for an interception versus Penn State last year. Unbelievable. Fourth down. Look out from behind. He drills it to Lowry at the 10, heads for the first down, sticks, and I think he's going to be short by about half a yard. It depends on the spot, but it's going to be close. Levan 
Kirkland chased Lowry out of bounds. 550 remaining. So if it is short, Clemson would take over and try to run the clock out. Officials are going to measure over there. <laughs> and they have it. So Maryland keeps alive its chances for scoring another touchdown just outside of the Clemson five yard line. The scary thing about Clemson is even when they get the ball back trying to run the clock out with the amount of or with the amount of great athletes they have their second and third teamers can take the ball the distance on you. 17th play of this Maryland drive. Inside handoff goes to Lowry as he punishes his tacklers down to the two. Vance Hammond number 90 was the first to make contact with him. You gotta wonder if we're gonna see Spinelli in here. He's been kind of the designated touchdown scorer in the last three weeks for Maryland. He's scored four times in the last three games. But he's not in there now. O'Donnell keeps it himself, pitches it back. Johnson's in trouble. Wolford comes up and makes sure he doesn't go any further. Richard Smith, along with Wolford, combining on the tackle. But I tell you, Donnell Wolford has to be a surefire number one draft choice. If, he, if he's not, there's something amiss. On the option, Johnson originally looked like he might have gone into the end zone. And Donnell Wolford said, hey, we'll have absolutely none of that, sir. A lot of teams don't even throw Wolford's way, so you don't hear about him that much during the course of a game. The reason is he's got his man blanketed. Third and goal from the five. The draw to Johnson. Close touchdown. Ricky Johnson looked like he was going to be stopped just short. He was close but got in, and the touchdown for Maryland gets the crowd a little bit happier. Johnson with his third touchdown of the day. He's rushed for two, and he caught a 24-yard pass. You know, the game has already pretty much been decided, but this gives a little confidence back to the Maryland players. You know, they, they were in this game, and all of a sudden, Clemson exploded, and they got taken out of it. But now they're back in the position to say, hey, at least we executed, got a touchdown at the end. That'll give them a little self-confidence going into the Virginia game next week. And they'll go for the two-point conversion. If they can indeed beat Virginia next week, it will give Maryland a winning season. O'Donnell's going to have to throw for it. Now he's in trouble, backing up. Now he flips it for Barry Johnson. Touch or conversion is cut. Oh, and a touchdown. We don't get six more. It's like that fake field goal. So the two-point conversion makes it 42-25. And this is a great effort by Neil O'Donnell. He's trying to hit John, or he's trying to hit the back in the flat. Oh, wrong one. This is the touchdown run. Great individual effort by Ricky Johnson. Now, the now on this, on the extra point, he's trying to hit Ricky Johnson in the flat. When he's not open, he backpedals, gives himself some time, and delivers the ball right before he gets hit. Touchdown for extra point. <laughs> it, it counts for two, whatever it is. All right, four and a half remaining. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ACC station. Live Bird Stadium. Kevin Slate along with Ben Bennett. You see the numbers that are important. Clemson roaring out to a big lead here in the second half. Taking control of the game. Maryland just scoring and getting the two point conversion. And now the expected onside kick. Well, they could make the finish exciting if they would recover this one and go and score. Well, they still have to score three times, though. Because even another touchdown, even two more touchdowns and two successful two point conversions still puts them down by one. Virginia leading at halftime of that game. That would make them six and four. North Carolina State pulling away from Duke now in the third quarter. Boy, you look back at some of the early losses that Virginia suffered. There's a high pop-up type of onside kick. Rodney Fletcher making the grab for Clemson. And I want to tell you, 
you can tell when a team is very well coached. Some teams wouldn't know what to do when they pooch a, a kickoff. You can fair catch a kickoff, which means nobody can hit you while you're trying to get your hands on it. And that's what he did. So Clemson's mission now is to run out the clock. And they'll do it with Chris Morocco at quarterback number eight. Reggie Lawrence comes in at tailback number 34. And there is Reggie with his first carry of the day. I tell you what, there may be a difference between the Clemson tailback, but it doesn't look like any in terms of effectiveness one in there because I don't care if it's Joe Henderson, Reggie Lawrence, or Terry Allen. Yeah, we keep talking. It. They used to say Oklahoma had the best backfield in the country, and who was second best was Oklahoma's second team. I, I think Clemson can start to get up there now and make that claim because they are just so deep at the tailback and the fullback positions. 409 remaining. 318 yards rushing for Clemson to 122 today. Morocco still has it. He slides for the first down into Maryland territory. So now all 10 times that Clemson has had the ball today, they've moved it into Maryland territory. The ACC championship on the line today for both teams, and Clemson has responded with a sensational second half. Chris Gardaki's had a tough day today, hadn't he? He nearly allowed Maryland the kind of momentum that they needed to get themselves in good shape. And did get them in good shape at halftime with a 14-13 lead. And here comes Lawrence. He runs right into Bradford and doesn't get any further. It's to midfield, and that's all. I, I should go back and clarify and finish the statement. Chris Gardaki's had a tough time punting today. He hasn't been on the field once to punt. Hasn't at all. This offense has done a wonderful job of maintaining possession, getting into scoring range. Gardaki missing one field goal, having another one blocked. But he did kick a 51-yarder in the early going. Second down and 10 now for Clemson. McFadden breaking through. He's inside the 35, and they've got another first down. Boy, it's an awfully effective offensive team that Danny Ford puts on the field, isn't it? it, it and it's just, it's very subtle. It's as subtle as a sledgehammer. They don't do a lot of different things. They just come out and beat you up. And like I said, they're deep. Their, their tailbacks and fullbacks, second and third team, are as good as a lot of teams' first teamers. And they just keep running new bodies in there. And the toss comes back inside the 30, down to the 20. Heading for Payton at the 5. Touchdown, Thompson. Charlie James takes it in. And you talk about, if we sit here and talk about how deep they are, and I told you, even their third and fourth teamers are so talented, they can take it the distance on you. All he did was ramble 32 yards. Well, they were supposed to run out the clock. But they, did, they didn't do it. <laughs> 218 remaining. Sile comes on. The 49th Clemson point is tagged on. You know, and you got to understand, Danny Ford's not trying to run up the score. He's just simply putting his kids in, and they're running their base offense. They're just executing it to perfection. Five times they've had the ball in the second half. The result, five touchdowns. There's nothing sneaky to this play. They just pitch the ball to James and let him run with it. Watch the acceleration once he gets through and the effort once he gets his hands on the ball. They gave him a little gift at the end because his knees hit on the two, but that's all right. It's late in the game. He worked hard for it. He deserves it. His only carry of the game, 32 yards for the touchdown. That'll make, that'll make his mommy and daddy pretty happy out there in the audience. Some of the young Clemson fans who made the trip up. Danny Ford, pretty happy guy right now, shaking hands with James Coley, his tight end. Well, he knows he'll be playing January 2nd in the Florida Citrus Bowl. You know, it's great because so many teams in the ACC right now have a shot to go to a bowl game. 
Virginia, obviously, if they finish off today and come back and beat Maryland next week, they've got a legitimate shot to go to a bowl game. The winner of the Duke State game can go to a bowl game, and even the loser of that game, should they come back and win the following week, Duke against North Carolina, they have an opportunity to be 7-4 and four and go to a bowl game. It's been a fourth touchdown, fourth quarter for Clemson. Reminds folks of the Maryland-West Virginia game earlier this season when Maryland was in the ball game midway through the third quarter, only to get blown out 55-24. to 24. And they lose the handle on the kickoff. Ricky Johnson looked like he ran into his own man, Blaine Rose, the tight end. 2-11 remaining in this one. Wayne Harps again was down there on special teams for Clemson. 49 to 25, the Clemson Tigers. Not only winning the ACC championship today, but doing it with an exclamation part at the end. You know, we have an update on that North Carolina State Duke game, but Charlie James has been helped to the Clemson locker room after that touchdown run. He injured himself. Well, he went down pretty hard when he got tackled going into the end zone. Maybe that knee buckled. He's being, he's hobbling over there up the hill to the end, uh, to the locker room. O'Donnell. This is Zolak. Zolak in there now. Throws for Green, who has it go off his hands. You know, it was interesting reading some of the articles about Maryland in the offseason. They really felt like Zolak had the opportunity to come in here and compete for the starting job with Neil O'Donnell. Then O'Donnell's just come on and had a tremendous year for the University of Maryland. Scott Zolak, a sophomore. 6'5", 227 pounder. I gotta tell you, this conference has got some of the biggest backup quarterbacks ever recorded. <laughs> Kinda wait for a seven-footer to strut out there. Some of the starters aren't too small either. Got a 6'6 freshman of North Carolina. Zolak floats it out there for Jones. He's run out of bounds on the far side at the 38 with 157 remaining. Richard Smith over there defending for Clemson. Well, if you're Joe Krivak, you're kind of hoping that your guys stay in bounds so this one can end just a little bit quicker. The sellout crowd really into it at halftime when Maryland had the lead. People are going to look at this score and not believe me, but they had the lead 14-13 at halftime. Everything fell apart in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. 28 fourth quarter points. Zolak hits another one. One of those touchdowns set up by an interception return to the four yard line. And another one by a blocked punt. They scored those two seconds and two touchdowns in 12 seconds. But really more than that it was the offensive output of Clemson. As Zolak drops back to throw again and he hits his man again. Dean Green breaking a tackle. And finally wrestled the turf. You're Joe Krivak, you got to like the effort by you guys. You're, you're essentially out of the game, and guys are still bouncing off of people and trying to move upfield. So a team that wasn't even expected to contend for the ACC championship, and then everybody's preseason pick battling here today for the right to represent the conference in the Florida Citrus Bowl and Clemson coming out on top in a big way. But for Maryland, a very successful season with one game still to play, and that one's at Virginia and a chance for a winning season and only the second year under Joe Kriba. And a lot of people don't realize the difference. Six and five and five and six. It's only a one-game swing. But boy, in a whole offseason, you can go back and say, I had a winning record. It makes, makes preparation for the next year a lot easier. They'll sneak it on fourth and inches. Clemson with better than 500 total yards today. I want to take the opportunity to thank our statistician, Marty Aronoff, and his son, our spotter, John Aronoff. Fine job by both of those gentlemen. And then Joy Zucker, our stage manager up here in the booth, who did just a wonderful job making this telecast a lot more enjoyable. The loveliness, Joy Zucker. 58 seconds remaining in this one. Zolak downfield for Johnson. He makes the catch in heavy traffic at the 30. What a grab. Barry Johnson, the sophomore. Boy, again, keep in mind that everybody except Joins and Rich Nelson, the left guard, return intact in this Maryland offensive unit. 22 yards on that play. Zolak throwing the ball well. That one intended for Rose, and Richard Smith was there defensively for Clemson. Well, they'd like to get another one in there. Well, I can tell you, Zolak would like to throw one right here. He'd like to throw for six. 
Now, Kevin, I got to tell you about an interesting letter I got the other day. A couple of occasions this year, you and I have happened to, to cross wires and talk at the same time. Got a letter that said that uh, I was trying to be a camera hog and I was egotistical. The letter went on to say, can't wait to see you at Christmas. Love, Dad. <laughs> I'm telling you, anything to liven it up. <laughs> no lack in trouble. Harps has him and has the sack. But Wayne Harps has contributed so much today on special teams, and now he gets in there and gets himself the sack. Four seconds remaining. Third and a country mile. What do you call here? You got to dig deep into your bag of tricks to find something to pick this one up. Don't forget next week here on our ACC network, North Carolina against Duke, Maryland against Virginia, or South Carolina against Clemson. Check local listings uh, for the time of the game in your area. When you look at this ball game, and you look how effective Clemson has been. Keep in mind that Maryland has scored more points on Clemson here today than anybody had all year long. And they scored on them in the first quarter, which nobody had done all year long. So there are some uh, bright spots in what has otherwise been a dark afternoon, a dark fourth quarter. 28 points for Clemson here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Zolak to the air, down the middle for Johnson, a leaping catch at the 14, and that third and 18 becomes a first down. That's a great pass, and you gotta, if you look for the, the silver lining on the dark cloud, it's gotta be the play of Zolak here late in the game. He has done well in this drive, 24 yards on that play, and he's overcome adversity, third and 18. His favorite receiver in this drive has been Barry Johnson. He's made two leaping catches. Well, also, one of the things that you got to realize, he's not doing this against Donnell Wolford and the Clemson starters. He's essentially doing this against guys that are young and trying to make a name for themselves and haven't received as much playing time as Clemson's regulars. 17 seconds remaining, and we will crown Clemson the ACC champion for the third consecutive season. Andy Ford's probably going to get a Gatorade shower. I guess he's getting ready for the feel of it over there. You know, watching him during, during that tape in the uh, pregame show, he didn't look real happy when he got doused with the Gatorade. Tell you what, he gets doused today, it's going to be cold. <laughs> he may head to the shower in a hurry. I'd like to see a coach turn around and throw some Gatorade on a player sometime. Nice little turn of events. The Florida Citrus Bowl awaits. Zolak trying to get him into the end zone. Throws it up for grabs for Johnson. Nearly has it intercepted. Always a dangerous play, but Jerome Henderson had the best shot at catching it for Clemson. Well, you got to think if you're going to throw a jump ball up there, you want Joins to get his hands on the ball. He's 6-1. We're going to try to get Danny Ford to stop by for a post-game interview. So stay with us when this one wraps up here from Bird Stadium. Of course, we'll update you on all of the scores from around the country before we sign it off here from College Park. Eleven seconds. Zola hit as he throws, completes it to Johnson at the eight-yard line. And now they'll have to call a timeout. Three seconds, ticking away to one, and it's over. Clemson is the 1988 ACC champion, the third in a row for Danny Ford's Tigers. And they will go to the Florida Citrus Bowl and play an opponent that is yet to be determined. 49 to 25, the final score. Clemson with a 28-point fourth quarter. And that is enough to wrap it up.
Ben, it's an impressive way for Clemson to win. People had questioned uh, really how good was Clemson after they lost to Florida State, after they lost to North Carolina State. For the last couple of weeks, they have shown people just how good they are. Oh, like we said, Clemson is so talented and so deep, it surprises you when they don't win every week out of the box because they are deep and they're well coached. A lot of teams have some good players. A lot of teams have a good coach. Clemson has a combination of both. And they have played very well the last two weeks in blowouts over North Carolina and Maryland. 49-25, Clemson defeating Maryland here this afternoon. Danny Ford getting wired up down on the field. Danny, can you hear us yet? Ben? Yes, Kevin, sir. Kevin Slayton, Ben. Ben. Up here, Coach. He wants to, I can't hear you, Ben. He wants to talk to me. Can you who, hear me, Coach Ford? Who is this? This is Ben. Who is it? <laughs> Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett, Coach. Can you hear us? I can't hear you. Well, congratulations on the victory today. Okay. okay. We're having a little bit of trouble trying to set that uh, straight. We'll return. I got you. Talk with Coach Ford in just a moment. The Clemson Tigers, the regular season ACC champs.